We will call this meeting to order. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. All Good morning. right. This is a nice day. I hope everyone had a very great weekend. Uh, public comment. Um, Clerk, we have one uh, citizen who signed up. Ms. Larry Pierce, could you please come forward? And please remember, the Board of Commission is welcome your comments. It is my goal to make these meetings run smoothly and efficiently uh, for the <coughs> government. And in, in this vein, I ask that you follow the rules as directed by our three minute limits that you have. <coughs> and uh, when you hear the buzzer, that means that your time has expired, and I ask that you wrap your sentence up. So if you could state your name and give us your address and your subject matter this morning, I would greatly appreciate it. Larry Pierce. <coughs> 4120 Van Sant Road, Douglasville, Georgia. <clears throat> I sat down and just about forgot to sign up. I was so excited. <clears throat> but maybe age has got something to do with being forgetful. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Council people and citizens, of which I'm one. And you people watching it, you too. Now, <clears throat> it's a good morning, and I even made sure that my laundry starts my pants. And I found out that when you have starts Levi's on, it makes you look taller. I feel taller. Well, <clears throat> I just wanted to wonder how many people watch the news on Channel 5. You know, <clears throat> it's old hat, seems like when I come up here. And I'm wearing a railroad cap that someone gave me. And I, I've been trying to get on the right track. But today I'm probably going to get off the track. <coughs> uh, this guy was interviewed by Channel 5 in regards to what's going on. And I uh, just want you all to know that she did admit to the fact that she drove about 500 miles taking her daughter to Athens when she first claimed she had a meeting there, which she didn't. And then she went to Tuscaloosa. <coughs> Then she went to Gainesville and then come back. That's enough of that right now. Okay, just wanted to open up your eyes about it. <clears throat> now, the other news is that if you're watching the paper, <clears throat> Larry Pierce, me, is between the bad dog lady and Mr. Ryan here, the RDA. And they no longer can put tracking devices on uh, sex offenders after they've served their sentence. <clears throat> so people say, where were you in the paper? I said, I'm between the perverts and the <clears throat> mad dog. Now, I object to the fact they showed her picture in the papers. They should have shown mine. <clears throat> it was about me. And they did mention it. Got a lot of press. Mark Twain said, bad press is good press. So, since I'm a stalker, I went to Gables and bought a hat, then I went to the mall and had a hat made. It says stalker. But, <clears throat> at my age, I'm not going to stalk young people. It says senior citizens only. So I hope you appreciate that. You know, with laughter and humor comes a point of order. And the point of order is, today, is that When you have this order, it's for 12 months. It didn't say I couldn't talk about it. <clears throat> now, but I want to tell you some good news. The good news is, and you see, there's two sides of me, the bad side and the good side. So the good news, I told you a couple weeks ago, I was going to have a whammo. Well, this is part of the whammo. <clears throat> I feel that I can discuss and do away with this lawsuit against the county. Gets everybody here. Mr. How? Mr. Pierce, your time has expired. Let me just finish the sentence, ma'am, okay, please. Just wrap it up. And here's how I can do it. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's things they want and demand. This lawsuit could go on for two years. So I suggest to the board that they pay the attorney fees and give Mr. Wayne Rogers the compensation. And I believe I can talk them into rescinding this order. Because then we go further, as some of you people like to say. We go forward, because this is going to be in the limelight a long time. And the only way to do it, now I say pay somebody, 
but she has to resign. <coughs> you guys got to convince her to resign. Mr. Pierce. <coughs> Mr. Pierce. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. We appreciate you. And uh, we will take this matter under advisement. So we're going to move on. Yes, and I appreciate your contr contributions okay. to county government. Um, I'll allow you to. I've had no bad comments wearing my hat. Oh, I went to the theater. And y'all got to go see Tyler Perry's movie. That is the funniest movie about family morality. <laughs> you will laugh and maybe even wet your pants because it is humorous and it's a great movie. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Pierce. Appreciate your coming you today. Again. Presentations. Next, we have presentations. Uh, first <coughs> presentation is Tourism and History Commission presentation of the uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, Suzanne Hudson and Ms. Barbara Woodley. Good morning, and we appreciate you coming in. And I, so, Board of Commissioners, to know I'm asking our appointed boards to come in uh, periodically and extend just an overall view of what's going on in those various uh, appointed, appointed boards and started off with uh, tourism and history <coughs> first. So this is our first kickoff uh, presentation and just want you all to stay tuned for more. So you all have the floor, so good morning. Thank you. And welcome. Uh, all, thank you for welcoming us and giving us time to explain what tourism and history does. This PowerPoint is presentation I hope will answer a lot of questions on just some of the projects we do. <clears throat> this is the museum of course, the Douglas County Museum of History and Art, which was previously the courthouse and at one point was slated for demolition. The Tourism and History Commission hired a consultant and put together a proposal to save this historic building, which is an amazing example of the international style of architecture. Because of this historic architecture, architects from all over the country visit this building. 20 years later, it's a thriving museum and a tourism destination. In 2018, you'll see we have visitors from 37 states. That's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Seven countries. <coughs> and 58 Georgia cities visited our museum. Our total focus is to make them have a good experience. Seeing our exhibits, we train all of our uh, staff and volunteers to give them a great tour and answer as many questions as they can about our history. Our tourism uh, office stays open five days a week. The museum has received national recognition in many different avenues. But this avenue was a surprise to us, AARP, the film crew from Washington, D.C. visited our museum because one of our Hall of Fame members was very much of interest to them. They were in the uh, AARP magazine and they will be featured in a film also. This, this is the Douglas County Museum Hall of Fame and we feature Douglas County citizens who have national recognition in their field. These are three examples of our recent inductees. You may recognize some of these names. Elena Myers Taylor, of course, has won bronze and silver <coughs> medals in the last two Olympics in the two women bobsled event, and she's going for gold this time. Uh, she's amazing. And Captain Herb, Herb Emery, I'm sure you all probably know him. You may not recognize the name Louvain Demps. She's the person that AARP came to Douglasville to film the documentary about. She was a member of the uh, singing group called the Andantes, which was a backup group for all the Motown singing groups that you've ever heard recorded. She's amazing, and she, you've heard her on all those recordings, you just don't realize it. And she's right here in Douglasville, Douglas County. And these are a complete list of all the members of the Douglas County Hall of Fame, who include things like people like musicians, actors, athletes, inventors, aviators, and lots more. You have to come and see. Our exhibits. We have so many exhibits. We have over 10,000 artifacts in our museum, but they were all given to us by our citizens, which that's what we're so proud of, is the entire museum in each aspect <coughs> celebrates our citizens. These um, exhibits take 
months and years to put on view just because we want to research the items and make sure they have something to do with Douglas County history. These are some uh, an eclectic pictures of our exhibits. Military uniform exhibit is one of our most popular exhibits and people of all ages love this exhibit. When people donate museum uh, uniforms to this exhibit, we often ask to have the picture of the person who wore it. So when you walk into the exhibit, you see the uniform, you see the picture of the person who wore it, you read about their service, when and where it occurred, it tells the whole story and people love it. We have the military music playing, but for years we've been seeking, a, we have been seeking a Marine uniform because it was the one of the, all the service uniforms that we lacked. Everyone who came in, we asked, do you have a family member from the county who would donate a Marine uniform? We just couldn't get one. A couple of months ago, this sweet lady walked up to the counter and asked if we would like to have her husband's Marine uniform. And what she gave us is amazing. We have his dress blue, we have his fatigues, we have his overcoat, we have his jacket, we have his picture. And so now we feel like we're complete and it's, it's just wonderful. Besides celebrating our citizens, we celebrate historic properties in our county. And we're very proud of the people who keep these properties restored. It's not an easy task. This building was built of handmade bricks and was used for a barn for many, many years to store hay. The couple bought this property and restored it. And so we honor these people at our historic preservation luncheon once a year. Besides our permanent exhibits, we have what we call special exhibits. These are some of our special exhibits that were uh, at the museum this year. We try to have an exhibit to bring visitors into the museum that might have never visited a museum before. So Art of Cars, Hutchison's Cousin, and Art in the Garden. We try so hard to do a different focus, not just history. The exhibit we're working on now to go up in May has taken us 20 years. I know that sounds phenomenal, but we have been working on getting an item for an exhibit for 20 years and we got it last week, so we're all celebrating this. <laughs> also, we want to thank Dr. Ramona Jones for bringing to our attention the uh, March being Women's History Month. So we are highlighting the women in our museum that fit that description. And also, um, the Reflections exhibit, which is the new Manchester High School Magnet Art Program Senior Students. It opens the end of April, and this is the fourth year we've had it, and they are amazing artists, and it's always a wonderful exhibit with, with a, a great interest, so um, you need to come and see that one also. <coughs> the Douglas County Film Trail. This is a really a highlight for tourism. Um, people come from everywhere and walk in the door and want to know where the movies have been filmed. So we've dedicated a small area in the museum to tell them about each of these movies that have been filmed and um, where they're filmed and people seem to love to come to this exhibit. And we try to keep our list updated. It's not easy because there's so much filming going on. <laughs> Tourism is a huge part of our commitment. We didn't have a tourism ex event, exactly. So we created the Hydrangea Festival. And we decided that hydrangeas, everybody could afford, and everybody could grow, and that they're very showy. So we didn't have 20 years to wait for cherry trees like Macon did. So hydrangeas grow quickly. That's the <coughs> Last year, this is 2018, we had 13 states, 67 Georgia cities, and six nations visit the Hydrangea Festival. That is pretty cool for Douglas County. Because of the quality of our gardens, you see they've been featured in national magazines, and our flower show has won top flower show in the state and top flower show in the nation every year, and this is our 12th year. 
citizens come to the museum to visit, they're often inspired to come back and bring things that they have at home, which is how we get things. So they go home and they look around and they come back just like the lady with the marine uniform. We do all the research and 20 years later, it's a thriving museum and a tourism center. Also, I want to say that a lady came in and said, you don't have anything about our uncle so-and-so. And I said, well, we don't know about your uncle so-and-so. If you bring it, we'll celebrate him. So she did, and we're glad to have that gift. Um, we've got a big project ahead for y'all. In 2020, our county will be 150 years old. We've got to celebrate. So the museum is committing our gallery for a one year to the history of Douglas County. Now this will be a special exhibit, so things that, um, that are given to the museum are given to the museum. But when we have a special exhibit, the things can be on loan. So we need your help bringing this exhibit together. We have to start now. It takes a long time to put these exhibits together, but happy birthday, Douglas County. I hope y'all learned a little bit about tourism and history. We did. Very, very good. Before you all walk away, I just want to say, Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions or comments to, uh, to these young ladies? Uh, uh, yes. Commissioner Guyton. Suzanne, y'all didn't have anything about driving Miss Daisy. Yeah, we do. It's in our book. Okay. It's I in our book. It. We don't have a, we didn't have enough places to put all that. We have filled an entire book of the movies and yeah. Okay. She's in there. Come visit. We'll give you a tour. Uh, Commissioner Carthen I just want to invite you for putting Lavinia Dems up there. She's one of my best friends. Oh, Isn't she great? She's she's so lady. humble. She's so humble. She so is. thank you for We love her. her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, first, thank you for having these type of uh, having appointed people come before us because we, we get enlightened. We don't get to see this. See, we as uh, district commissioners, we're only here every now and then, and, and we don't really get to um, hear this side of it. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to make this presentation. It's very enlightening. So, what happens? I mean, do you need more room? <laughs> is, is, is it big enough? And I don't know. I'm just asking uh, in an honest because what I'm hearing is like, oh man, it, it sounds like we could go further. And I'm just, I'm asking, I'm not pressing. It's not a, it's just a thing that you're here. What, what, what's your future for growth? I mean, do we have enough room in there? Kicking out Parks and Rec. Yeah, we need to, we need <laughs> Parks and Rec to find another spot. <laughs> okay. We had an immediate answer for that. Okay. <laughs> no, we're just kidding. We love having them as neighbors. Yeah. We really do. But yes, we could always use more space. More space. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're just listening. And again, this wasn't a press, and, and, and in no means was it talking about a reorg anything like that. But I, I see a lot in that. It looks like that we there's probably more here that can be um, celebrated. And um, we're just wondering if, if there's uh, a potential in the future to accommodate. I just want, I'm glad I now know. <laughs> so anyway, that was all. Thank we you. We are partner with Parks and Rec to do a Hall of Sports Hall of Fame for them. So we're really excited uh, mm -hmm. to do that. We've gotten started, but that is takes a lot of research. To, um, That's for uh, kids that have come up through through Hall through um, Parks, and Rec. Parks and Rec department and then gone on to um, do well in their field in sports. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ladies. We owe that to Gary. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for your presentation. That was great. Thank you. Thank you for the board. Learn a few things from this presentation. I just wanted to, uh, before I call our next uh, presenter, if uh, our director, Colin Cash, could just name off the top of your head a few of the movies that have been filmed here, if you could just go to the front. Oh, sure. Because <laughs> there's so much being filmed here, so we want our citizens to know what's going on with these films. Who knows? You may just have an opportunity to get in a movie. Um, anything that you've seen in probably the last four years that has a jail scene um, was probably filmed in our Douglas County Jail. Um, just recently, some of the things that um, came out at the end of last year, um, The Mule with Clint Eastwood. Um, a big movie called Logan Lucky a couple of years ago with Channing Tatum. Um, I don't even know where to start. Uh, Ozarks, which is on uh, Netflix, and then Jason Bateman came back and started filming another show he's working on um, called The Outsiders. Um, of course, we've got Stranger Things. We've got um, 
gosh, you put me on the spot. I've got so, I mean, I have so, so many. And they don't all just film at the old jail either. They do film at the old courthouse. I'm getting a lot of um, requests for filming at Boundary Waters and even um, Deer Lick. Um, a lot of cable shows. So, um, trying to think of something that has come out really uh, recently that's going to be filmed that, that you can see. Um, a lot of times they come in under a, a, a name that's not really what it's going to be because they don't want us to know until it's till it's done, but um, I'll try to keep y'all uh, posted when I'm allowed to, to tell like the names and stuff like that. But recently we've had um, Clint Eastwood, Bradley Cooper, uh, Bobby Brown, Bobby, of course, Bobby Brown, um, and I got, um, I got my picture made with Bobby Brown, I got my picture made with um, <laughs> Jason Bateman, um, so uh, Michael B. Jordan, um, <coughs> My mom's going blank. Samuel L. Jackson. Yes, I mean, just all kinds of people. And of course, Tyler mm -hmm. Perry has done some stuff here too. So I mean, we're we're right there in the middle. I mean, we get calls two or three times a week. And again, it's not just for the old jail because that's been a big thing. But they people in the industry have gotten to know us, and uh, they, they film in downtown. They film in private residence. And I always don't know about those, but I try to get them to let. You know, to see where uh, they're filming in on private property as well. So, just a little bit of um, let y'all know what's going on. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. You. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. Oh, no problem. My mind just went woo. All right. Thank you so much. Next, we have a SWAST update. Uh, Mr. Terry Gable, how are you doing this morning? Uh, I'm doing very well. Okay. Thank you. And good morning to everyone. My name is Terry Gable. Uh, when more on out the belly and I'll be doing the SWAST update for the March report and time permitting uh, David Good will do a quick update on the vendors for um, for the SWAST projects. So with that I'll get started for uh, with the report. Um, an overview of the of the SPLOS program um, at the so I'll be reporting on the January revenues and the work through February. So we're about 20 23 million dollars that have been has been invoiced out. Uh, you take that with everything that's in the pipeline, we're about 25% of the, of the overall SPLOS program uh, uh, dollars that are expected. Uh, if we break that down by each department, uh, we've spent uh, so far years one and two around 13.5 million in, in fire, transportation is at 7 million, and followed by the Parks Department, uh, we're about a million dollars. So with that said, uh, report on the revenues that came in. We did see a, um, it's just more uh, pronounced here because of December uh, numbers were, were our best, I think, as far as the overall program. But we came in, the number for uh, January is 1.99 million. Uh, that was right at projections. You know, we're projecting about $2 million. So, we, you know, we stayed, I mean, it's only about $20,000 different. So we hit projection. Uh, still be positive with that and say it was good. Uh, we've had two months left in this last year, February, March. Hopefully they'll, that'll start picking back up and folks get back out and start spending some money. Um, and we'll, we'll end up uh, with, a, with a good SPLOS year. Catch up with my... Um, SPLOS year one and two, if you look at the total revenues, uh, we're about $45 million for the total. Uh, and if you compare that to uh, the projections that were set, uh, we're about a million dollar overage for the for the uh, first two years. And then uh, even better numbers than that, if you look at Splash Year Two, which uh, exceeded Splash Year One, obviously uh, showing the raw numbers for January is 1.9 million. Um, the actual revenues we were 21. Point right at 21.6 and if you just look at last year two we're about 1.4 million dollar overage uh, with our with our number so with that said uh, as we move through the years we did last year um, none of the SPLOS revenues are put towards projects until we get money's been reserved for the uh, bond obligations and we'll make the last payment or the second payment uh, in April 1st would be $16.3 million. 
uh, and that'll satisfy the the, uh, the obligation for year two. And then we'll start that back over going into year three, which will be April. And with that said, we'll uh, I'll give you some updates on the projects as we move through the programs. Just a few of the projects that have been completed. Uh, we'll do that with each program. Um, a lot of the fire, fire obviously, is the ambulances and the fire trucks that we picked up. Uh, we're starting to show some of the 2018 uh, equipment that's been purchased also. Uh, the the countywide digital radio system, uh, it's, I like to say it's on budget and on schedule. It's, it's moving along very well. Um, I think we reported uh, last month, we have six of the nine towers that'll go up. Uh, the towers have been erected, the buildings are there. The uh, only thing left of those would be the equipment. The three uh, parcels of land that we're still working on, uh, well, we, we've got the land, I think it's pretty much set. It's all still gas property. The factory shows in the South Douglas property. Um, those, are, those are in place. Uh, Motorola is just working through the, the, the permit process right now, uh, and everything's on track with those. And uh, Jay with Motorola says he's, this has probably been one of the better uh, projects that he's worked on as far as getting uh, land deals done. He said it's, it, it can really delay projects, as you well know, with transportation. Uh, anytime you have to deal with property owners. So, uh, good news there. He expects the, the sites to be completed in June. And that'll be all the towers and everything erected. And then um, we'll start moving into the testing phase. And we'll keep the board updated with that and, and maybe scheduling some site visits if the board uh, would like to do that. Jay said he'd be happy to take you around. Uh, so we'll be working with you on that as we can get closer to to June. Uh, Station three, uh, I'm glad to report is he is uh, uh, pretty much wrapping up that project uh, this this week. Um, we've got a, pro a change order that we're processing. He's really just doing some painting, um, finishing the cabinets, and finishing up the kitchen. So. We'll have a, a completed, renovated fire station. I know the chief and Scott and them are, are, are be happy to get the crew back in there. And we hope to be doing that the first couple weeks of, of April. So that's good news there. Um, we'll also be working with communications and setting up a ribbon, a ribbon cut for this. Uh, the chief wants to have the crew back in the, the fire station before we do that. But we hope we'll be doing that. The weather will be nice and we'll get out there and have a ribbon cutting. Uh, for the for the fire station it's going to be really impressive and it was a big a huge upgrade compared to what they were in and with that uh, and that that finishes up right now with the current projects that we have in, in fire we'll be getting with the chief we've got obviously some uh, renovation money left uh, that's in his his pot and we'll be looking at some other fire stations to renovate um, again he'll have to provide a priority list for that and we'll be moving forward with some more work and then with uh, the additional fire truck and ambulance, it'll be coming up in 2019. And we're going to start looking at the, uh, the fire station nine. Um, the plans for that, they have plans for that. We're going to start working with, uh, with the chief and with um, Mr. Peacock as far as how we're going to proceed with that as we move into year three and start making plans to get that project um, under design and, and the plans updated. So with that, um, any questions on fire before I move into in the transportation. In the question from the board of commissioners, uh, Commissioner Geiger. Uh, yes, uh, go back to this. <laughs> <laughs> On the fire station? Yes. Uh, this is uh, just station three. Mm -hmm. um, budget. What was uh, originally budgeted? 182,000? That was the estimate. <coughs> Uh, you know, this, so this falls under the category that was that was designated for $2 million for renovations. Um, when I think when it first developed in the thoughts of, of it just being a renovation, uh, they had estimated 180 million. That's what the chief and them showed on the on their uh, paperwork. But obviously that 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 was when we first started seeing some bids start coming in, and we got the low bid was 442,000. Um, just seeing how much materials cost, and and it was that's where we ended up. So we 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 moved some money into this project from the $2 million that we knew we were going to have to have. Uh, we ended up, uh, the budget I think uh, for it right now is 600000 is what we have in there. And we're right at $500,000 is where I think we're going to end up. 
probably a little bit over that with the change order. So the adjusted funds for this project, um, we're still under that. Budget. Yes, yeah, we'll come uh, in. I'll this was for our renovation. The 182000 was for our renovation only. But That's then right. we ended up pretty much uh, gutting the whole <laughs> yeah, place yeah, so. and redoing it. You know, that, it's basically a new building. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're right now, it says um, current budget is 833, but we've spent 650, is what you said. Well, that's so six, 600 is the actual budget for it. And that's just trying to work through what, how we did the change orders when we added money to it. Um, but the, the final, final numbers on it will be right around 500, a little over $500,000 for actual cost for the renovation. And we'll, we'll, the budget that we had set was around $600,000. Okay, you're back. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Commissioner Robinson, you have it. Yeah, I just had a question. You rarely do I have one about this, this particular bucket, but um, the communications tower. Um, when do we think that's going to be online? I'm, 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 like at, at some point, I guess there's a I pilot, I go live. I mean, what, what's that time frame? Uh, to, to go live, I think uh, the completion on it's October, November. Okay. Time frame. It is October, November. Mark, are you? I, I think things are ready with that. I'm more here than the rest of uh, pretty, much on schedule. pretty much on schedule. Well, the reason I ask that is that, again, it's something that you just, you, you're just you mindful of. I mean, obviously, this is something that's important to our public safety for all branches that actually use this this tool and stuff. So I'm just trying to anticipate. We, we get so caught up in sure. right away and this, and it's like, okay, but sometimes we have to message to the citizens who are listening to this, like, okay, but when's it going to go live? And so every now and then I, we need to emphasize what, what's the end benefit, you know, and, and how we benefit from it. So you're saying, for the record, October of this year, Chief, or somebody from Public Safety, anybody? He's behind, he's behind the team. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, they're saying uh, October, November is our anticipated go live date. That's when all the testing will be complete. Mm -hmm. uh, and we should be live. We'll be actually getting some of the radios in uh, June. And uh, we, we've got an exercise coming up that we, we're going to be able to use some of those radios for that exercise. Okay. And those radios, and again, equipment, and, and to your point, equipment goes in all the vehicles, all of that. All the fire stations, all the patrol cars, uh, on, on all the officers. Uh, so that, I mean, just everything. Everything will be fully, so October and stuff. So again, I'm not trying to lock us, but I'm just, but you know how we have to do it here. So October or so. Okay. Right. I'm good enough. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you so much. Commissioner yeah. Mitchell? Yeah. Just one question. So you're six of the nine towers. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. we're missing a couple. Mm -hmm. Would that affect the timing of, of this October, November time? No, it's all built in the uh, it's all built in the schedule and as far as the actual sites go, uh, around June. You'll have everything up and it sounds like we were able to move through these parcels without you know, these last three. Uh, they're underway now. The government shutdown delayed them some. We're getting the federal permits. But I, I don't think any of that hindered him. And the last time I talked to him, now I'll have him back in in the next couple of months. But he's on target to finish that around June. And I think that sets the stage to implement the testing and, and be done in the fall. And speaking of the testing, speak to that mm -hmm. testing phase. I think you guys got already laid out kind of how that would, so the public will know. Like you'll go through, I don't know, three, six months, however that works out to. If you want to, um, I know that'll that'll be uh, they'll they'll start with actually going around each side and, right. and we'll check every side. Yeah, they'll actually break the county into grids, right? And each grid will have to pass a certain percentage mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that we have total coverage like what they have promised in the contract, right? Uh, and that's a ninety-five percent coverage. Right. Uh, so they'll break it down. They'll actually go to each of those individual grids. They will do a test with a radio back to 911, uh, and if it doesn't pass, then they'll have to fix that with will pass. Yeah, but the goal is 95 percent, and I just want you to share that because I know I've been a couple of meetings on, on, on the phone, whatever, kind of going through that whole makeup, so the general public can know kind of the time frame and kind of the testing, and then when we fully operational. Right. Okay. Uh, I 
something outside of that. And you talked about the equipment already. And the, the piece, the land on, on Austell, uh, the Austell gas piece, is that a done deal or we just- It's done deal. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, they've actually cut the road in okay. uh, and have dug the hole for the footings for the tower. Okay. So uh, it should be going up. That, that's our next tower that'll go up. Got it, okay, okay. I yield back. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. All right, yeah, proceed. Okay, we're moving to transportation uh, completed projects. We'll start adding some uh, 2018 projects as we move uh, into year three. Uh, the resurfacing program, uh, so 2018 is done. I think we may have a, um, an invoice or two with CW Matthews to close out, uh, but the work's pretty much done. To, um, we've, and uh, in, in just talk a minute, so we're basically done the 2018 SPLOS. Uh, the Elmig roads, uh, that were being done by uh, by the maintenance department. Uh, obviously, that's that's been impacted by the the fire. Uh, so they're still still around halfway done with the 2018 L Mig streets. So that's that's been delayed, and we have to move into to this year really. Um, as far as 2019 resurfacing, the the list has been Miguel has got that list put together. It's out on the street. Bill's got it advertised, and I think it's due April fifth. Yeah. And that'll be the bids coming in for the 2019 resurfacing. That will include uh, the Sploss roads and also the Elming roads, which will be your subdivision shorter roads. And then the, the Sploss roads will be the more main thoroughfare roads in the county. Um, we have a question from one of our commissioners. Sure. Mr. Uh, Commissioner Guider. Uh, yes, Mr. Gable, um, and I mentioned this to you when we met. Um, we've combined the, L, the LMIG program with the SPLOSH program for 2019. However, we've got half the roads that were under the LMIG for 2018 that have not been resurfaced. Um, so uh, is there <coughs> any way that we could consider combining that because we don't know if we're going to be getting back to paving in-house uh, at this point. Um, and maybe I need to address <coughs> that to Miguel. Yes. But uh, one thing can affect the other, <coughs> is what I'm saying. If, it, if you've got a road that, or subdivision that needs to be done before you do the main thoroughfare that it leads out to, then uh, it can delay both projects. <coughs> I do not anticipate that there would be a delay from one project to the other. However, to your point, the 2018 roads, Elming roads, that are still remaining to be done, our intent is to do them with in-house forces because of the cost. We can do the work a lot cheaper. So if we were to add it to the contract or put it out as a separate contract, you can anticipate the costs going substantially higher. So our, our hope is to have the equipment repaired and back in service uh, in time to begin paving uh, this spring. So we should be able to complete those roads while the contract is ongoing uh, for this work. So we'll both be working at the same time. That's. That's is there cool. <clears throat> is there any possible way of renting uh, some equipment while we're going back and forth with the insurance company? We've, we've looked into that. The, uh, there is some equipment that can be rented, but the paving machine is one that we cannot find a paver that is uh, available for lease in this area. Uh, so so that's the problem. So we we're can, gonna they're going to uh, repair the brand new equipment that was in the box. Yes. Instead of replacing them. That is correct. Uh, the, uh, as far as we know, based on the assessment that's been done so far, a lot of the equipment can be repaired, and uh, that is likely the way we will go. In fact, it's been looked at over by the original vendor and their technicians to, to make sure. As soon as they take it apart, they're going to be doing additional inspections to make sure there's nothing that was not visible that they need to do. But the, uh, the assessment so far has been that most of the equipment can be repaired. 
There are a few pieces of equipment that will not be, their total loss will not be repairable, but they're not related to the paving operation. So you anticipate us going forward with the local paving, the in-house paving, for the remainder of the 2018 NMIG program. That is correct. Um, in the next month? As soon as we can get good weather and the equipment back, we'll be able to start that. Is that an estimate, estimate of a, a month or two months or what? <laughs> it may be certainly less than uh, Less than two months. I, uh, that's our hope. We will have good weather in that time frame, and uh, some of the equipment will be back before then, if not all of the equipment. Well, you you mentioned that it would co it would cost more if we included it in the contract work. However, 2019, all the LMN, LMIG program is included in the contract. That that's so right. Wow. If we can finish up 2018 in a couple of months, maybe, while we uh, including that in the the bid for the contractor. Again, originally we we carved the program the number of miles based on us doing the work because we can do it cheaper. Right. In order to bid it then it would cost that much more to do it under the contract, perhaps two or three times as much. So, because we will have the capability to do paving, then it would, we thought that it would be prudent to try and finish that work ourselves once we get that capability back. Now, keep in mind that it isn't just the LMIG program that the, that the maintenance uh, crew deals with. We deal with other roads that we do in-house that are not part of that program. There's uh, certain roads that need attention, uh, uh, patching, and then overlay. So, so we're talking about many different programs going on at the same time. So we've got the SPLOS, the LMIG, and we have our own <coughs> internal in-house uh, maintenance and repair program. Okay. I yield back. Huh? Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Commissioner uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, let, let, me, let me pick it back on that. If, my, Madam Governor, I'm glad you, you focus on this. It's going to come up in our transportation committee tomorrow regarding this point, but um, it, it begets a, a question. This is for my peers here at the table, which is this is about capacity. We've had this ongoing conversation. And, and, and this, this discussion about in-house versus outsourcing. And it's gotten to a point where you, 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 it has nothing to do with, it, it's, it's just capacity. And so the question becomes, do we just outsource everything or with the spirit that, okay, we can save more money, but it's, it's a delay in realizing what the citizens want, which is to experience their tax dollars on a daily basis. It's a trade-off. So we can, we can outsource it to professionals and let them do this as far as one full contract, thank you and good night, right? It's gonna cost us, it's a premium. But, or we can try to like, well, we can do it internally. But internally, you just heard the argument that it's a capacity issue. And the more you kept asking questions, the more it's like, okay, look, I gotta do this road, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. They can't do everything. I appreciate what, what, what our transportation group wants to do. But this is something that it's not gonna stop with this cycle. I'm sitting here and I'm sitting here like this. Ain't, this is not sustainable. So I'd like to go into my committee. I'm open to the conference. This is a work session. I'm open to say, look, guys, we need to change this. We need to revisit this. You, we're already behind. You, you can't blame equipment in the fire. Fire had nothing to do with it. We were already behind. I right? don't, don't message that, right? It, 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 and so now we got to fix this equipment. But it's like, <coughs> you know, our in-house staff is supposed to be for strategic things. Pothole, I mean, operational potholes, uh, maybe a, a cul de sac. Um, you know, we learned about Riverside when they tried to say, and this again, this is BM, we can do seven and a half miles. It's like, no, you can't. That, that's beyond your capacity. And so we're looking at this, and again, don't get this wrong. We love transportation. We put half the sloths into it. We're saying we're giving you leadership, people, open positions, money. It's not about, so don't get us wrong. 
this is not an indictment of, of that, but we're just saying, I think our approach is, is, is somewhat, it's not realizing what we want. We're going into our third year on, on, on this, <coughs> and we're getting behind. It's the constant, it, it, we keep coming up with, well, 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 and I, I really believe that, and I'm, again, I, when we do agree, we agree, that perhaps change needs to be done. So uh, we don't have to believe it now, but if you guys um, have some, some, some opinions about this, now it's time to let me know before I go into that committee meeting tomorrow about perhaps we need to revisit this, because it, it's, it, I, I don't see us getting ahead. We're, we're behind, we may catch up, but we, we keep delaying. We keep getting behind. And that means, okay, if I put resources over here, I can't do this, or no, I can't do this. It's about scale. So let's take the pressure off staff by, I mean, you've got this contract in here. Let them do everything regarding that and let staff focus on, have less pressure where they can focus on some of these other things. So I'm going to think about it. But I'm glad that was a perfect segue. Now, I won't belabor it, Madam Chair. I'll make my point. I yield. Okay. Let me know, guys. All right. You may proceed. Okay. The um, brings us to the Lee Road extension study, which is complete. We're still out invoices we're, we're working with uh, that consultant on, and we'll, we'll be closing this project out um, once we do that. Uh, this is the project we've set up for uh, the Douglas County DOT project engineer. And once that, that position is, is filled, uh, we'll track that. And that, that's uh, right now set up for the life of the SPLOS program. And that brings me to Stewart Mill Road at Reynolds Road. Um, now, I'm constantly talking with Jacobs uh, with this project, and it's like the other intersections where I'm pushing these guys to get these things designed uh, as quick as we can. And I was hoping we would have some plans in, in March, um, but they, they, that the design on that is going to move. We won't, we won't be seeing any plans until probably the 1st of April. Uh, which will set the stage for for right of way that we'll be completing on that project. We some of the right of way work is already done, but Miguel's office needs the new right of way plans and the uh, uh, the revisions that were made when we did the new design on it. So it's moving forward. We're, we're showing an April 2020 uh, completion on it for construction. Uh, I'm hoping we we're still on target for that, but we do need to get get it get the design complete and get Miguel the right of way plans he needs so he can move forward with that. Uh, Bright Star Road at John West. Uh, this project, and I've reported on this leading up to this month, uh, the design has been done on it. Miguel is, is working. It's in the right of way phase. Uh, he's about 50% done. You'll see on the agenda for some uh, some uh, options that he's that's before the board for approval. Uh, hopefully, we'll get those wrapped up uh, as we move into uh, it, towards the end of March. And this is one of the projects that I hope Miguel's going to have an uh, the opportunity to get this project uh, in one more let or towards your letting in April. <coughs> and with that said, the Sweetwater Church at Doris will be partnered with Pauline County. Um, the plans are complete. The one right away parcel that had to be acquired by um, Pauline County is complete. Uh, this project's ready to go to construction and get it's in Miguel's office to get it get it prepped and get it ready for that. So hopefully in April we'll see both of these projects uh, be let. And then Chapel Hill Road is our larger project, so the intersection projects, it, it incorporates three or four intersections, uh, so it obviously will have more impacts on, on right of way. Uh, we, we, Miguel has displays that uh, the, the consultant provided for him. He'll be setting up a public information meeting uh, out at the site uh, anytime. We'll, and I'm, I'm sure we'll get that that advertised before we have that meeting, um, but that'll be coming up. Once we do that and we get public comment input, uh, we'll send that back to the designers. They'll make what adjustments that Miguel needs, uh, and then we'll move to the final design stage for that. Um, I don't see that happening. That's probably going to be in the, towards the middle of the, of the summer before we get get to the final design stage, and, and then the right away phase will start, and then it'll all depend on how you know what the right away looks like, how many parcels that Miguel's going to have to. On have to acquire the uh, to work our way through the to the construction portion of that. But every, again, everything's moving; just a matter of working through the process. Uh, the Highway Five, the right turn lane on Highway Five at Douglas Boulevard, one of the uh, SPLOS projects. Um, Miguel has is, is, is got that. Uh, we're 
we're at the point where we've got to get that out um, and he's very close to doing that uh, a request for, for qualifications to get a consultant on board to get that design started so we can start identifying how much right-of-way is going to be needed and what uh, uh, impacts we'll have as far as utility. Post Road Bridge at Dog River, this is the GDOT project that was originally identified as a SPLOS project. Um, again, I've got some good news with that. If you remember that contractor, GDOT's contractor, has that contract that's statewide. Um, but it looks like the contract was ahead of schedule, so he should be in here hopefully in the fall. Uh, and get started with with this needed bridge replacement and with any luck we may even see it nearing completion by the end of the year but we'll get it let's get him in here first and see what kind of progress we can make um, but we're, we're set to go just waiting on the contractor to, to move into Douglas County uh, the next three and I'll, I'll go through go through these individually I normally talk about them together but SEI is doing the design on them um, Again, I'm pushing SEI to get it to a point where we can get it let. Um, individual things are coming up on each one. And, and for example, Lithia Springs and Chestnut, uh, the typical section that Miguel asked them to, to try to attempt to put in, um, we're seeing some right-of-way impacts on both of those. It's very tight. Uh, the right-of-way is tight. Um, our goal was, was not to do that because that's just going to delay the process a little bit more. Uh, so we. Well, I've gotten word back to them to eliminate the Miguel's agreeable to eliminate some of the areas like the grass strip that's normally between the sidewalk and curb together. Try to pull all that in and see if we can't eliminate really any right-of-way impacts, maybe with some easements. And if that's the case, we may. If that's the case, we'll do that. Uh, if if not, if it's not going to matter, we're still going to have to get the right-of-way. We'll we'll go back to the typical section, and that will slow them down because we'll have to get the right-of-way on both of those streets to. Uh, in order to build the sidewalk and that's uh, the plans are basically done and again Miguel has those and we're, we're, we're reviewing them for um, any corrections or comments and then we'll get those back yeah, Mr. Um, Gable, I have a comment regarding these sidewalks we've been talking about this probably about a year about a year now yeah how long does it take what, what's the target date I know Commissioner uh, Mitchell has expressed some concerns about those sidewalks we've been talking and talking when can we walk and get it done? Well, the, the design's done on them. Uh -huh. The design is done on them. And that's, the plans are done, and we have those in-house, and Miguel has them. Uh, and it's just a matter of getting them reviewed. We've got to work through this issue with the right-of-way impacts on them uh, in order to get them ready for construction. Hopefully, uh, we can see some positive uh, response back from SEI that if we pull everything in, we won't have to get any right-of-way may eliminate most of the easements and we'll be able to move to construction. Um, the one at the high school, uh, fortunately we didn't have any, that's a state route, there was more right-of-way. Uh, we're not going to have any right-of-way issues out there, but we are having to do a study uh, for that GDOT is, re is requiring for the, it's called a PED study, and we have to know exactly what, what the, the pedestrians are doing out there, and also a, a speed study for that, that corridor, as you well know, it's a high-speed area. So we've got to work through that. Uh, I don't see that taking a long time, but that is a process that we're going to need to move through since it's a state route and it's one of the requirements that DDOT has. So we're, we're right here at the edge with it. The plans are done. SEI is done with it, other than some comments that we may go back to. It's just whether or not we've got to go in the right of way and what easements we're going to have to acquire for them. They're small projects, but it is just a, you know, anytime you start talking about city streets like this, and you want to put sidewalk in with curb and gutter and drainage, it's just going to impact. You can't help but for it to impact some properties. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, thank you, I won't belabor the sidewalk because I, I, I just think one more time, I'll let somebody harp on what should have been a quick win. It's turned out to be like it really shouldn't take that long. So I'm, I'm let me go get you out uh, for that. All right, my, my question has more to do with um, you mentioned Lee Road, and um, uh, obviously we've got the widening um, in our book, and we talked about this earlier. So I'm just I told you I would I'll bring it out sure. in an open meeting, which is um, we reappropriated money for um, out of um, SR 92 and Wakey, uh, and we moved. Um, that money over to uh, what we call the Lee Road widening, Correct. and we enhanced that with five million dollars from economic development. Right, so six plus five 
Levin me. Levin me. All right. Uh, specifically, um, I, I, well, five and six. Uh, that one million dollars that was left over was for what we call <coughs> safety and operational improvements. Yes. That true. Um, 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 safety and operational improvements, which includes um, lights, intersection lights. So I'm, I'm put lights to the side for a minute. I want to focus on intersection. Uh, the premise of SR92 and Anna with you is that uh, no, we don't want to realign, spend six million dollars on realign Riverside when Riverside was just cut. <laughs> it, it's like no, don't take another six million to move that. But we still got to get the traffic congestion there, uh, making that left turn, and so left turn on the Fairburn. So um, there's still a need for a light there, right? So we know you need to mark that in our book. The yeah. second part is I'm going to bring to um, Mount Vernon in 92 um, as another operational and safety improvement. We've got that school on uh, that's been there. Commissioner Mulcair have advocated that for quite some time. So what, what I, I want to make sure that we're highlighting because we reappropriated money. The public needs to know where the money went, but. Our, our list needs to reflect the decisions that we're making on where we want that to be focused, right? And that gets in the queue and starts lining up, right? So that was already up the queue. The money was already live. And so now we're reappropriating it. So when will that be reflected in our book? And I need you to just say what you said about an hour ago. Okay. When would that be updated? So, and, and, and I have the, the project list that I've showed the board in the past. I've got that in this presentation and I'll go over it quickly, but just to repeat kind of what we talked about, the this month's report, I, we've got all these projects, and that being the Lee Road widening, the safety projects, and the pavement evaluations that the county is committed to doing. It. It's well on the way now. It's high priority, and we, we're, we're well on the way of starting that um, and, and getting that done. Uh, we've got project numbers set up for all that. We've got funds set aside. It's just not in this month's report. It will be in the the next month report. We'll track those individually and it'll just show up just like this uh, and I'll be able to update the board each month on kind of where we're at. And of course the, the Lee Road widening is a GDOT project but Miguel can help me with that but we'll we'll keep track of it and, and report on it. And, and, and again for the county, county administrator and just just for the record again we, we just don't want things to fall into a, a black hole. Um, these are some important projects that we, we again this, this process also is dynamic and it, it has enough flexibility for us to make you know different choices as we go along the way and, and if you if you notice there's been a, a huge emphasis from the public about intersections um, about what about safety and I know we get caught up in the glory of the broader sloss but the, you got to listen to the public sometimes uh, or most of the time um, um, which is what, what their priority is and so um, I like to for the county administrator to make sure we're putting the right emphasis on what the public is looking for. And sometimes we have to shift priorities. Um, again, back to um, safety, which should be our, our, our primary focus. You've got obviously making that left turn on Fairburn from Riverside, making that left turn on Mount Vernon onto um, Fairburn Road as well. Those, we've been talking about that for a while, but yet we, we can't, and it's always, the, you know, sometimes I hear this excuse, what, what is G dot? It's just like, well, what's the process? What's the issue? I'm paying for it. Like get, get package it in such a way that we can get some 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 movement on that. So, county administrator, can you just note that for us? Yes, sir. So we can we get that done. Madam Chair, is that okay? No, that's perfect. Okay, I, I just wanted to emphasize and again, if my peers have a different thought, please let me know before the transportation tomorrow. All right, we're done. Are you okay. Right, thank you so much, Mr. Robertson, uh, Commissioner Dyer. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, um, Terry. Uh, um, can I go back to Highway 5 northbound? <laughs> and maybe I need to address this to Miguel, too. Um, what's the holdup on that? Um, um, so the thought was we've got to get it. We've got to get a consultant on board to start the design so we can identify our right of ways the main thing. And it's, just, it's just a matter of getting the proposal out, the, requ the request for qualifications, so Miguel can, can select a, a consultant. This is another project it seems like we just keep talking about and keep talking about and there's just no positive action. We know we got to have a design and all that. Um, what's the holdup, I guess? Well, um, I put together as a result of not just this project but several others, intersection improvements that need to be designed. I put together a request for qualification that is all encompassing 
so that uh, rather than having to go out individually for all these different <coughs> projects, we're going to have uh, different consultants bidding or we are going to be qualifying consultants to be able to do work for traffic uh, improvements at intersections, whether it's a major project, whether it's a bridge project, all different kinds of uh, transportation projects. That, uh, that uh, request for qualification it has been completed. It's over at uh, Bill's office, and it's being advertised uh, at the end of this week. Or next hopefully, week. hopefully next week. Next week. This is for the consultant. This is for the consultant. So once we qualify the <coughs> consultant, then we would be able to um, engage them working on different projects without having to go back out. For them. So we have to have a consultant for every project. Is, is Pretty what much. you're saying? Yes. Uh, I guess I thought we had the engineers in in house. So. No, we do not. Um, so uh, once we get the consultant. Uh, I guess we'll have a list of yeah. consultants that we can uh, go to and say we need a consultant on such and such project, Correct. right? <laughs> um, so once we get that list, and that should take how long? A month. A month? A month to six weeks. Okay. Then we can assign a consultant to each project in right. intersection, I guess. That's correct. Okay. So we should have a design for the northbound turn lane on Highway 5 at Douglas Boulevard sometime this summer? Possibly. Late summer, perhaps in the fall. And once we have the design, then we have to deal with the right-of-way acquisition. Uh, are we seeking any funds, since that is a state highway, are we seeking funds from the um, state for this project? That is an option. We have not to, to date because the requests for funds are done when they have a call for projects and they do that every other year or so. <coughs> there should be one coming up later this year, so there will be an opportunity if that's the route we want to take to, to be able to do that. But uh, now, along with that option is the fact that you would have to go through the federal process. Now, and that adds time and cost to the project. So if, if we are going to be able to, uh, once we establish what the budget is for the project, if we handle it, if we're able to uh, handle it in, uh, we're using county funds only, then we can have the plans put together, finalized, and get it to construction a lot quicker. Much quicker. If we have to go, if we seek federal funds, even if it's uh, a few hundred dollars of federal funds, then the design takes a different route, and it takes much longer, and there's additional requirements that go with that. So it's an option that the board will have to, to make. What I intend to do is, once we get to the point where we have a sense of what the budget is for the project, and bring back that to the board, uh, for you to have that decision, we will bring it before the Transportation Committee and have a discussion about it, because uh, if you, if you want to seek federal funds, then we have to start doing everything as if it's going that route now. If not, then you kind of taint the process and uh, you will not be eligible for federal funds. Does the uh, state ever reimburse once we uh, have a project going? Do they ever, can we request they partial do, reimbursement? They, they do not. Once, um, they have to authorize us to proceed to each phase of a project mm -hmm. before they will consider reimbursement. If we move ahead uh, with any phase, um, we would have to do that on our own because they will not reimburse any of it. All right, this project is in the city. Uh, have we talked with the city about uh, help with the project uh, out of their splash funds? Um, 
I've, I've had discussion with the city about um, that project, but not specifically about them utilizing SPLOS funds for, for it. Because Douglas Boulevard is their road, too. Uh, it's under the service delivery, uh, so I just, should we not have that conversation with them? That's, that's a decision for the board. We would certainly, if that's the consensus of the board, we can have that discussion with them. Well, I, um, I'm just wondering why it may not be even done, I guess, because it is a city road that's in their district for the service delivery, and this is going to greatly enhance traffic going to the mall. A lot of people avoid that area in total. And instead of going to our mall, they may go over to Carrollton because they don't want to deal with the traffic on Highway 5. So I was just wondering, should we not talk with the city about, uh, in other words, you're saying it was never on their project list. I, I don't know if uh, have I seen there was. I, it was. Yeah, I don't. So we haven't had any conversation with the city of Douglas on this. About <laughs> paying for it? No. About the project and what it entails and the, uh, getting their support? Yes. In fact, they have. Uh, getting their support how? <laughs> well, uh, to the extent to the extent that is uh, because the part of the project or the a good part of the project is at a, at, a, at a corner, at an intersection, and there's an out parcel that is being uh, proposed for development or open for sale for development. We've had the discussion with them, should an application come in for something to go in that corner, that they would ask that developer to donate the right of way for this project. So they've They've indicated that they would do that uh, if something were to come in. So, so that's the level of support that we've been able to get from the city. But in terms of their putting their own SPLOS dollars into it, that is not a conversation I've had. Uh, again, if it's the, the consensus of the board, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, however, that is not a conversation that we typically engage in as it relates to projects that uh, go into the city. We, we just do them and, and uh, we move them with uh, well, West If County. they could get the um, <clears throat> right of way donated, that would be funds that we wouldn't have to Absolutely. pay for. So that would be a contribution to the project. Well, certainly it would, um, but the timing of that would be waiting on a development to come in as opposed to what we're trying to do, which is like move the project forward. Uh, My main concern was that it would be that lot would be sold without uh, them having knowledge that we have this project coming in that we're going to require some right of way. So that was, um, I don't know how big the lot is, I know there was a service station there at one time. But um, I just didn't want it to be sold and then have plans to build um, some kind of little restaurant or something on it without the knowledge that we're going to need part of that uh, lot for the right of way. Right. Yes, and that would keep us from ever having a left turn lane there. <laughs> and, and Commissioner, to your point, I, I've had discussion with the property owner. Uh, to let them know that we are envisioning the project. However, we're not at a juncture where we're ready to make a, a commitment on it because the very we point don't have that. The design yet. Well, not only that, but the very point that we were discussing a little while ago that if you are seeking federal funds, you have to get authorization before you can engage in discussions about acquisition. So I've left it open so that we have both options. If, if I engage with them about specifics about acquisition, then it taints the federal process and we would not be eligible for federal funds. I just want to see the project done and so does everybody on the western side of the county. Understood. Uh, so um, anything you can do to expedite it? Uh, 
but you need to have the conversation again with the city and make sure, you know, that the right of way is incorporated into any sale of that property. And we need the design ASAP. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Back. All right. Thank you so much. Our board commissioners, we have a pretty robust uh, agenda today, so we want to move on and we'll just ask questions at the end of the presentation. So we can okay. So, we'll catch back up where we're at. Um, and I'll, again, keep that in mind. Let me go back this quickly. Uh, Miguel Stamp with his transportation for uh, procurement 2018. We're still waiting on some dump trucks to come in, so we'll, we'll continue to report on that. And it's probably going to be into the third year before we get it. Uh, just real quickly, just uh, reiterate what we just talked about with uh, these, these new projects. Uh, the payment evaluations that we're currently uh, doing, um, we've shown that right now under resurfacing. We'll have a project number for that and funding in the next report. Um, if you'll come down, the economic development, the Lee Road widening uh, project, we're taking out the $6 million for that for the GDOT match. And then to move to the next slide, um, this is showing the intersections category. Uh, we've added the Lee Road uh, widening project there. Of course, the funds coming from Anna Wake at five million, and then there's the safety projects. Again, we'll have project numbers for all that um, uh, in our next report, and then the projects that um, that are at risk, as we've done before, is shown in the out. So again, that was the main purpose of, of me going through that, just to identify those projects, make sure everyone, everyone knew that we we have them set up in project numbers, and they'll be reported on next month. Uh, with that, I'll move into transport. I mean, into parks. And we'll slide through these quickly. Uh, the completed projects: uh, the Boundary Waters um, <coughs> Concession Building integrated. And we on track to finish that project May 1st. Uh, the building is up. I have a quick picture of it here. The electrical. He's working on the electrical, HVAC, and the plumbing. So we're we're on on within budget and uh, on track to um, <coughs> finish it. I think last time I showed you this, it was they just had the slab poured for the building, and it was uh, very muddy. Uh, he managed to get through that with a few dry days we had, but uh, we still got a lot of finished work to do on the outside. I think it'll really bring the colors together, and again, something the county can be proud of um, once we get get that completed. And right now, again, around May 1st, uh, moving into uh, first of the summer. The Boundary Water Soccer Field lighting is is complete. Uh, the power for that is being generated from the building. Um, so all we need to do there is just, uh, once we get power to them, we'll, we'll be testing them, adjusting them, and then we'll um, we'll, make, we'll we'll close this project out and, and the soft field lights will be, be ready to you, be used. Uh, Dear Lick, uh, we're wrapping up the design with Carter and Watkins um, and, and moving through the, the to the construction phase of this. We're all thinking about possibly doing the demo work for this site as a separate contract, uh, if it'll be advantageous. And with this project moving forward, I'm thinking in, in April or May, we'll, we should be ready to put it out for bid. Uh, our, our two big projects, the multi-purpose rec center, um, uh, Sutton Architect should have that project designed uh, around in June. Uh, Gary and I are meeting with him quite frequently and working everything out here towards the end. We're uh, probably maybe presenting the uh, rendering uh, for both this and the, the senior center. Uh, so we're on track here to get this project bid out sometime in the summer, uh, and we're still showing a July 2020 completion date on it, um, which we're still on track to meet. And again, the senior center is tracking real close to the rec center. Uh, both of these, the senior center may be a little bit before as far as completion on design. Um, but we'll have a, a rendering again to bring back to the board just to, uh, to look at that for final version before we move into final plans and get it ready to bid out. Um, but we're showing again in April, about an April completion date on it of 2020. And then the last two projects that are active, um, the last three actually, the Bill Arc and the Fair Play Parks, uh, I just sent that to Bill. It's been advertised, will be advertised uh, this week. Uh, with just the concession buildings at Bill Arc and the concession building at Fairplay. Um, so we'll, we'll 
have an opportunity to see what the bids come in for there and we we'll make some decisions as to whether to move forward with, with both of these projects. And then the last project is the Fair Play Park Lights. Uh, he is he started set, he'll start setting the poles and the lights this week. Uh, it only takes a week to do that and then uh, we should have this project all the lights hot um, as we move into April for Gary to start using. So that project is Fortunately, it has went very quickly. It was a it was high priority because of the condition of the of the, of the poles out there. So the contractor has done has done a good job in with making some quick progress with it. So with that, um, I'll take any questions on any more questions on the spot stuff. They time permitting, they can come up there real quick, vendors, and we'll, we'll wrap up. Okay, I just have one question on the Bill Bark and the Fair Play Park. You said you had some, it sounds like when, once you look at it and bid it out, you said you may have some discussions. Up. We don't want any delays on those two, either the Bill Bark Park, park is probably the oldest park in the county. Yep. I mean, I'm not sure about Fair Play. Winston. Winston. <laughs> the funding's there for it. It's just okay. that we, we've also identified the fencing on both of those, and that's where we're probably going to have to put the in the paper and decide uh, you know the funding's there if the bids come in higher than what we anticipate the funds will be there but it, it is going to jeopardize the fencing uh, for both of them but we I think the goal is to definitely get the buildings replaced um, and uh, we, we're so keep your fingers crossed and good bids for the fence. Um, okay come in all right. <clears throat> all right all right any questions any other questions all right thank you so much mr. Gable we'll bring um, mr. good up Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Board of Commissioners. Uh, my name is David Good, and what I'm bringing to you today is the uh, is basically the vendor list at, as far as the end of uh, February. Right now, we have 74 total vendors that are working on 52 uh, total projects. Of those projects, we have 29 that are active, and then 23 that are um, uh, completed. Uh, 26 of those vendors are in Douglas County. 22 of them are right outside of Douglas County within the 30 mile perimeter. Uh, 12 are still in Georgia, but outside of uh, that perimeter. And then 14 are out of state. Now, right now, um, we went up just a little bit. We're at about 65% of the current splice are local vendors, and then the, uh, the remaining are from basically outside, don't consider local. Uh, right now, the, uh, the staff and myself as well as much more than enough to be able to make sure that we have ways of communicating with business owners and letting them know this is what's going on in Douglas County. Uh, we definitely, uh, Peacock has actually reached out to some as well to make sure they understand what is going on. And I have reached out to uh, the Chamber of Commerce, letting them know all because they have people who are part of their organization, make sure that they want to be vendors with the county, that they go ahead and contact Mr. Peacock's office. Um, right now, as far as the, uh, the amount, even though it's 65% are the vendors, um, they only represent right now 38% of the funding. So that's what's funding that's going out to them. So we're hoping those numbers increase, but of course right now because of Motorola and the radio system, that's where the majority, um, I believe it's a little bit over um, 14 million um, is coming from Motorola. So that's why that number is that high right now. And then uh, for the minority participation, uh, we have increased up to about 18%, and that's 82 is still non minority. Now, um, this is only of active projects. This does not include all 52 projects, but this is of those 29 active projects. And I'm sorry to speed through, but I know we're on a little bit of schedule, so for me, um, that is it, unless there are any questions. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners, Vice Chairman Roxy? Yeah, just in general, and again, related to this plot in, in general, uh, and to your point, since we're celebrating Women's Month, and um, disadvantaged business enterprises, um, specifically, uh, what is, uh, I guess, Moreland, how do we ensure the spirit of that is being pursued? What's in place? Can you speak to that? Just in general, what, what you, from, from your observation, is there what, what, what are we doing to get to that point of, of, of promotion? Okay, and when I can, I can speak from you know, mine being out there in the community and the sure. work has come up on the other end. But um, one of the things that we're definitely doing is making sure that we're 
impacting uh, different people. So as we talk to different, we make sure that we specify those that are part of that disadvantaged uh, business enterprises. Uh, such as, you know, we had locally uh, doing business with Douglas County, and we actually had a number of women-owned um, franchises that actually were at those meetings, you know, talking about what is what does it take, uh, the necessary steps. Um, the one thing that I came here before to the board about was there's sometimes not a way to track these large firms doing business with smaller firms if they don't let us know in the procurement process. Some of them do, but some of them don't. So those, some of those forms could be women knowing and we always make sure that we tell them if you can't be the prime on something, make sure that you're on the sub. So that's where we engage as far as from a communication standpoint. Right. So we, we are, and I'm sure you know because you've been at um, um, two meetings I've had um, um, promotion within the county, how to do business in Douglas and how to do business in Douglas. And we yes, emphasize sir. in both of those settings, teaming, right? Now, how do I grow? How do I now get credibility? So, I mean, you've answered my question. I think there's probably a, a policy conversation that's going to be had sooner than later. And I'll work with uh, Commissioner Carthen, who's the chairman of procurement, because I think there's there's a policy consideration that has to be put in place. I mean, because sometimes it, it can be sidestep. It can be overlooked. It can be discretionarily, you know, taken in a different direction. And I, I want to make a commitment to it. I mean, I think there is a commitment, but I'm, I'm personally saying um, citizens want to know that they're He's getting consideration. It, it, it can't just be dismissed um, in, in some type of arbitrary manner. So I'm glad you brought that up. And, and that's all we need to do with that. I'm, I'm, I'm sending a message. Uh, but th this is important that um, citizens believe, uh, again, that there's um, equal opportunity, right? And, and the things that we say that we do, we actually do them. And so um, I yield with that. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Bay. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, board of Commissioners, next you will see you have the approval of the minutes for tomorrow. Please take a look at those and be prepared to approve accordingly. And then next, uh, tab number four is a proclamation. Uh, we will have a proclamation read by our own Sarah Ray, who is the Douglas County Chamber Executive President regarding uh, Women's History Month for March 2019. Next, we'll move into old business. Tab number five is authorization to create a juvenile programs position for juvenile justice incentive grant incentive grant project manager to be funded by juvenile justice incentive grant criminal justice coordinating council grant and this was tabled from uh, March uh, 5th 9th, uh, 2019 this uh Jane McDavid oh okay <laughs> Jennifer King is presenting again yes ma'am um I I'm going to ask for this to remain tabled. We are working out some of the details, um, I believe, in the breakdown of, of the grant funding and the cycles. Um, so I would ask for that to be reconsidered. Okay. And I believe our county administrator can chime in. Yes, ma'am. So we're working on, after meeting with Commissioner Carthen and the chairman, um, to change some language in the contract as far as vesting rights for grant funding contract employees. We have to change the pension plan. Frederick's working on that. We should have it ready by the next meeting. And so if the board sees fit um, to table these until the next meeting, um, that will work out better. Okay. Any questions from the board of commissioners or comment? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. So Madam Chair, are you comfortable with this direction change? And yeah, we are. We, we just had a period where it's just uh, vesting the first year you come, you know, first, first day. That's kind of unheard of, but we're working on it. We promise you we'll have it done. Yes, ma'am. And uh, you're comfortable. I mean, I'm just making sure we're all in line, but I'm, I'm fine either way. I, I, you asked, and so you're good? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll move on. No. I believe, Jennifer, you're the next one. Mm -hmm. Is the next one yours as well? Do you want to stay here? Okay, it goes along with it this does. one, and it's authorization to approve a contract for Christine Callahan uh, for the project manager for the Juvenile Justice Incentive Grant Program, and authorize me to change uh, to sign accordingly, and we will we'll have it on the next agenda. And that's not going to conflict the time, is it right? It doesn't. It, doesn't. it does not. Okay. The grant that's cycle, fine. I believe, starts July one. Oh, okay, good. We have a little time. Yes. Thank you so much, Thank Mrs. King. Thank you. Next, we'll move to tab number seven. Authorization for the Juvenile Public Defender's Office to hire full-time legal support staff 
but two attorneys with benefits and amend the budget. Um, Attorney Gordon, how are you this morning? I'm doing well. How are you all this oh, morning? Good. And this was also tabled for March 5th, 2019. Yes, so we are back. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, to ask the Board of Commissioners for reconsideration for legal support staff full-time in our Public Defender's Office. Currently, um, we have two attorneys, I am one, and then we have Ashley Rogers as the Assistant uh, Juvenile Public Defender. We are in need of a legal support staff member to handle the administrative duties in our office. Okay. Uh, County Administrator, you want to just summarize this one for us as well, this request? Um, yes, ma'am. This request was asked for in the 2019 budget and it was marked as to revisit in March once we finalize the 2018 budget, which has not been done yet. Um, their current budget will not support this position, so there would be additional funding. We need to amend the budget for this request. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Or I have a comment, but I'm just making sure. Any questions from you all have a comment? Um, Attorney Gordon, what I've done is actually, you know, we wanted to wait until March to sure. see what we had after the, after the fact. And unfortunately, this year, unlike last year, we didn't have any funds remaining without uh, impinging upon our uh, reserve, or should I say, uh, it's our fund balance, which I have to maintain at least a certain amount, which is 10 percent, in case there's a catastrophic disaster. However. I'm, I have a question for you. I know yes. you said full-time or part-time. Is it an opportunity for part-time or it has to be full-time? <clears throat> no, there is an opportunity for part-time. I would love full-time, of course, but whatever we can get approved, um, my office is open to do that uh, to just alleviate some of the uh, administrative work that we have. We have spent a lot of time in the courtroom and we're not able to um, do those other duties. Okay, I, I believe my attorney has you want to chime in? Madam Chair, if there's a discussion potentially about going part-time, we'd like those to be contract until they're made full-time positions just to clarify rights and privileges. So if that would be the case, we'd want to, before they hire, approve yes. a part-time contract. Okay. That is fine. All right. Well, any other questions from the Board of Commissioners? Yeah. Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. So what are we doing? Mm -hmm. uh, Part-time is something that I can offer this time. I mean, I, I would work with my board to see if they would be okay with that. I realize that you're strapped for support and it's, you have your two attorneys trying to do it all. Yes. And uh, next, as we go forward for the 2020 budget, yes. you can request again. And, and usually, I, I'm telling you, I was blown away. We didn't have a penny over this no. time. Okay. Usually, we have a little bit left, but we just didn't. And I was prepared to do that for you. <coughs> and then also, usually with that part-time position, you know, there's no benefits that come with that one. Yes. It's just typically no benefits. And then we have had situations, and I call it PRN, uh, staffing is necessary, and it's, it's, it's a law, and I'll talk to my attorney, that we can use them sometimes up to 40 hours a week. I know we have a cutoff right now, 29, but uh, health care uses this model. It's, it's called PRN, and we can use them up to a certain amount. I utilize this to staff and support. So I will work with you. We'll do what we can. And I understand you, you've you been petitioning for this position for a minute. It's just the two of you, you and two yes. attorneys. So, and this is a new department, by the way, um, okay. Board of Commissioners. Uh, we didn't have, this was a really uh, external function of the, of the county. And uh, when uh, Ms. Bromelo passed, we brought it in-house. So Ms. Bromelo had all the support she needed on the outside. But right now, we brought it in-house and we just have two attorneys trying to work the whole plan. Yes. Yeah. So we'll, you all okay with the commissioners? Mm -hmm. I'd like to give some type of coverage because we did yes. assume the responsibility. Yeah, we so did. therefore, mm -hmm. I, I get, I'm with you with your approach. Let's do part-time and then move full-time sometime next year or whatever. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate your support. Okay. You're more than welcome. Thank you. <coughs> all right. We'll move on to tab number eight, which is our business item. Authorization to accept additional grant funds from CAC, JC, JCC for the uh, fiscal uh, year 19 grant cycle in the amount of $14,208 and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. This is good. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Oh, great. Good to see you. Um, it's just that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Will you all let me get this $14,208 and amend our budget as I looked at my drug screening monies? Um, I realize that we, I may have to cut services off toward the end of the year, and CA, um, CJCC came up with an emergency. 
um, grant opportunity, so I went ahead and grabbed it, and they did authorize me to be able to get that money so I can continue the services that we um, use for our drug screening. Very good. Thank you. Any questions from the board? <coughs> Commissioner Dyer, is it any matching? There, no, this is not any matching. Okay. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Any Commissioner Carpenter? Okay, we're good. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. We'll move on to tab number nine, authorization to approve an option and ground lease agreement with Towercom B LLC for cell tower usage at 1765 Wortham Road and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Ron Roberts. Good morning, Madam morning. Chair, Commissioners, um, everyone. Yes, so uh, this document has actually been through the full legal review. I just want to share on, on our end since January, staff has been working with um, Chip Bullock, uh, Ellen Smith, um, and staff at Hughes Ray and, and uh, Chief Spencer. And, and, and our involvement really has been to make sure that the site that was selected is not in conflict with the training facility that the fire department current has at this, at this location. <coughs> and uh, through the past couple of months, the senior packet, we, can, we have determined that it is not. Um, but I would like to ask Ken to uh, to actually clarify a couple of points in the uh, agreement. Yes, Madam Chair, board members, thanks, Ryan. Um, the terms were already agreed to previously. This is just an extension of those terms. And I want to introduce Ellen Smith is behind me and her team. Ellen, who's with you? you want to uh, sure, Chet Bullock with Towercom and Collier McLeod. And we appreciate having yeah. you. Oh, and Ellen and I have been hassling over some language and she's really good to work with. I wanted to recognize her for putting up with me for the last month or so, but <laughs> entertain. Essentially, this is this is a more than a year lease, but it uh, the the issue and the issue is this one for the potential investment in it. Tower folks that are doing ground leases more of a commitment than one year before they'll put up stuff. Georgia law is, is not perfectly clear, although other counties do this, whether that this is a proprietary function versus a government function, meaning we're not committing future revenues of the county, we're actually receiving revenue and we're receiving tower space. Uh, Ellen has been generous enough to work with me on negotiating the language so that if the law is ever clarified in Georgia where it eliminates the ability to do a proprietary multi-year lease, this automatically goes to one year. And so uh, I'm fine with it. It's gone through. It's been highly vetted and I just wanted y'all to know that. And the difference between this is you're actually not committing future revenues. You're actually receiving revenues and tower space assuming the tower goes up. Okay. And if the law is changed, we've got built-in protection to <coughs> fix the lease. Okay. Thank you. Attorney, any other comments? How much is it per year? How much is it per year? $18,000. $18,000 a year. For the first year, once the tower is up, mm -hmm. um, with the opportunity, that's for the first carrier, <coughs> which is AT&T. If there are additional carriers, T-Mobile, I'm sorry, but that's okay. I just want to you on the TV. Ron, if you know this, you could just say it, too. Yeah, I'm, I, so yeah I, was, I, I didn't know the specific sorry, of it, but yeah, so it was $18,000 a year, and there was like a 15% increase in, 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 uh, uh, or in the succeeding years, and then if there are additional carriers, there are a cost for that. Okay. Save your trip. Sorry about that. No, they have more property. Yes, you got more property. Got some more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Sounds good. All right, we'll move on to the next uh, uh, step. Madam Chair. If it's all right, I'm not going to make Ellen and her team come out tomorrow night's meeting if that's all right. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were here, and we really appreciate y'all being here. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. much. All right, tab number 10, authorization, or should I say authorized planning and zoning to move $25,000 from occupational license budget and utilize a grant match for community development assistance program grant to update our unified development code. Um, Manager Roberts, again. Uh, again, thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, if I could take just a moment, I'd like to introduce uh, a new staff member. Um, Phil Schaefer uh, just joined us last week. He's our uh, my new zoning administrator. And I just wanted to introduce yourself and say a few words. Madam Chair, Council, thank you. Um, I have to say, it's kind of like coming home. My first job was working for counties as a planner one, two, senior planner, and the rest. So having worked for the last uh, seven months for the city as their zoning administrator, I'm 
happy to say now I'm your zoning administrator mm -hmm. and uh, we'll do whatever I can to help out with any questions you have or help Ron do what we need to do for uh, updating the code as well. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for, and welcome for board. And what a wonderful segue uh, since it is about updating the code. Um, so uh, in your package is a resolution that I would I'm asking to get signed by the Board of Commissioners to submit for the Community uh, Development Assistance <coughs> Program CDAC grant, which is due March 28th. Uh, the resolution is part of the submission process and it indicates to the Atlanta Regional Commission and the grant reviewers that the commissioners support the grant submission and that they've committed to the 25% <coughs> match money that's required. Um, so those, that's my ask today is to get this resolution signed and then to allow me to move the, the money around. Now I want to explain why that's in there. It was a BIR for software integration for uh, occupational licenses. Um, it was approved in the 2019 budget, and um, what uh, with this opportunity, really wanted to, to, to capitalize on that and 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 move and move on this. The grant that I'll be submitting, if it's accepted, it's going to allow us Douglas County staff to update our entire code, which was written in 2004. Now we've updated it through the years, but this is a complete revision, top to bottom, incorporating in the Sweetwater Master Plan, the Lee Road components, the character areas that were covered in the comp plan. This is an opportunity to roll all that in and include it into this document going forward. Um, <coughs> sorry. Previous estimates to complete a UDC update of this magnitude would be in the 200 to 250 thousand dollar range. <clears throat> so, um, so the possibility of a successful grant allowing the county to do it for $25,000 far exceeds the benefits of the aforementioned software update uh, for the occupational licenses. Now, that's not saying we don't want to do that. It's just that we were we had put that in there because we thought that there might be a, a potential where New World might move away from, or they might IT might change New World or what have you. So we wanted to do that. So, what I'm asking is to take that money that we're that's sitting in, in my budget and utilize it for the match for this so we can get a whole new code and me and Phil can get busy over the next probably 10 months working with ARC staff to update this for the county. Okay. Any questions from the board? Yeah. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, I'm trying to. So we're reappropriating money. I just want to follow the source. <coughs> we're reappropriating re money that the board we approved in occupational licenses. Is that accurate? That's correct. It was a BIR. Did we approve it? Yes. yes. Okay, it was approved. That's, that's okay. It, it was approved. Mm -hmm. So money that was approved that we want to reappropriate for a different use. Um, and so the money that we were going to, the intended use of that money for occupational license, we really don't have that need anymore. Or you're, you're, you're changing priorities, which is okay. But it, what, what I'm hearing is that there's a shift in priority. Is that accurate? Yes, Commissioner. This is a wonderful opportunity and it is shifting priorities. Okay. All right. So again, I'm just looking how decisions within you know, directors and managers are able to make discretionary choices. Decisions. Um, okay. So, all right. So you've shifted. No problem. I'm not sweating that. I'm just acknowledging the authority that you have um, to do so. So, um, so I'm, I'm thinking about this update. And I guess my question is, if it's a match, not 25%, it's 25,000, what is the total then? Um, I have spoken with uh, Sam Shibagan, who's the manager for the Community Development at Atlanta Regional Commission, and he and I asked, I said, look, this is all I have in my budget, so uh, would 125 get our, our, our update that we want? Would that be? And he said, yes, that would. So the whole amount would be 125. Okay. All right, I get it. 125, and that's sufficient to get us what we need. I mean, I have no objection. I, I appreciate you trying to update. You know where we, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to become a little bit more progressive um, in, in how we um, uh, uh, collect information, display information, use information, codify information. So I do appreciate this. I just wanted to make sure we, we follow the shift of money that, that, that sometimes gets questioned here on mm -hmm. uh, doing comments and so forth about authority. And so I just appreciate that. Again, I'm just duly noting. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you Commissioner Geiger. Just one quick question. So yes. you you won't come up short in where you're moving this money from in that lineup. No, ma'am. Okay, because no, you're not gonna do what you 
thought you were going to do when you submitted your budget. That's correct. Well, I mean, not at this time. Um, we can always revisit it later, but it was for uh, occupational, for, for citizens to uh, online update their occupational licenses. And we just figured that with, with the amount of people that would actually do that this year, it's not, it's not going to be, this is a better opportunity. So you're going to put it in your 2020 budget? Yes, ma'am. There's a possibility for that. So, uh, I, and I concur with the commissioner that you can move the money around as long as you don't come up short in where you're taking the money from. So, <laughs> all right, I yield back. Okay, thank you. All right, um, Matthew Roberts, thanks. Thank you for your presentation. And also, I understand CDAP helps with our sidewalks. You know, we have opportunities to get, unless that's the wrong. Is that the no, ma'am? You know, we originally thought we could use. The CDAP is a new is a new program at ARC, and so I've actually written three of these things in the past couple of months trying to figure out what would, what would work. And a lot of them, uh, I had some meetings with Miguel trying to see if I could get some funding for the for the sidewalks and Lee Road, but they're not allowing that. They're not allowing any kind of construction. So it's, it's studies, plans, um, <coughs> assistance with other things. That's what uh, that's what they're allowing for. And that's when the idea came to me. I said, Hey, now this is a wonderful opportunity to update this to update our, our, our Unified Development Code. Because also, as you may recall, when we approved the comp plan last October, um, one of the work plans in the comp plan was to update, over the next five years, a UDC. Mm -hmm. so, and, and bring us to be more progressive and competitive as a county. And that's what this tool will do. Yep. Okay. Well, we won't compete. That's important. Yeah. All right. Thank you so Thank you. much, Vice Chair. Yeah, and, and again, I, I appreciate the clarity. You know, again, um, you you being accurate about um, the estimates. I mean, we've we've had in times past here, we've blown budgets by what a million seven. Um, we we missed um, what I want to call road. Uh, what was it? Um, resurfacing by you know four million. We blow we blown budgets to four, right? Materially. Right, not not rounding errors, but materially, and so it's important that we, we we're asking this question. This is this is between ourselves, but we're asking yes, questions to establish the fact about you know there there can be implications for missing estimates, but it, it's uh, it's sort of relative, right? It, and I, I know sometimes there's some extremism that goes on here. I, I'm you know I'm, I'm probably short of time, but it, it, it it's some extreme commentary, right? This order of magnitude. Right, and so if you blow a million seven, we gotta change the millage rate to make up mistakes by staff, or we blow something by, I don't know, estimates. It, it, it becomes material for us. So some of these comments, this is not you, Ron. We, we're, okay. we're asking questions in general because this is a work session for the Board of Commissioners sure. to work through certain actions that we may have to take based on certain conditions that, that outcome. But, but anyway, I, I just had to grab that for the moment. I, I'm good, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so Thank much, uh, Manager Roberts. Okay, Chief, you ready to stand up here? For yes, ma'am. We have five in a row. Tab number 11, authorization to appoint Pablo Lugo as representative to Region 3 EMS Council and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tell us about this, Chief. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the Region 3 EMS Council uh, is a region-wide council uh, that basically uh, does zoning requests for EMS services. Uh, recently over in DeKalb <coughs> County, uh, the city of Dunwoody uh, had some issues with their ambulance service. Yeah. Uh, that was taken to the Region 3 Council. Mm -hmm. uh, a special committee was assigned and uh, that committee is working on uh, taking care of that issue. So Region 3 EMS Council is, is a very important council. Uh, Sharon Davis, uh, who passed a couple of years ago, uh, was our member uh, when she passed. Uh, Y'all appointed me to fill that vacancy. Uh, as you may or may not know, uh, I'm quite busy doing other things as well. Uh, Pablo Lugo is our training captain. Uh, he's a paramedic. Uh, he's very well qualified for this, and uh, I would just ask that you approve him to fill my my slot <coughs> so that I can do other fire chief and EMS director duties. Okay. Any questions for the board? All okay. right. We'll we'll move on to the next one. Very good. Thank you for having 
So a voice at the table. Um, tab number 12, authorization to approve change order number three for fire station number three, which is Bill R. 2016 Splash Project, as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee and authorized the children to sign all related documents. Chief Spencer again. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this total change order uh, comes to the amount of $20,281. Uh, it includes stuff such as our interior lights uh, that were not, uh, they were the wrong size, basically. Uh, the brick that we had, we thought we were going to be able to salvage a lot more brick than we did, uh, but we were not able to do that. So uh, we're going to have to paint the brick. Uh, on the entire station so it'll all match. Uh, we had to buy additional brick as well. Uh, some of the doors that we had intended to salvage uh, were beyond salvage, so we had to buy interior doors. Uh, there's a stoop on the west side of the building uh, that was not included in the original plans. Uh, but basically, without that stoop, you would walk up to a door, and if you needed a, uh, a key to get in while you were standing there, you're going to get rained on. So uh, the stoop, it was built. And uh, lockers far out the block walls, uh, some additional duct work for the vent system in the bay, uh, and all that comes to a cost of uh, actually $31,668, but uh, we got a credit for $11,387 because we are going to uh, take care of a turnout gear dryer ourselves. We're going to build one that will that'll work better than what we have bid out. Okay. So what's the total? Uh, the total change order is $20,281. Okay. Any questions from the board of comments? Okay. We'll move on to the next one. Uh, tap number 13, authorization to approve structure upgrades for the fire department to be funded through 2016 SPLOS funds as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, yes, ma'am. <coughs> this is for uh, stretcher upgrades. Uh, currently, we have uh, four furrow stretchers that we are having some major issues with. Mm -hmm. uh, what this allows us to do is replace those stretchers with the striker stretchers that we now, uh, uh, when we bid a new ambulance, mm -hmm. that's part of the bid. Uh, they are the uh, power pro stretchers so that our, our people don't have to pick up that stretcher mm -hmm. and put it in the back of the ambulance anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, it loads itself. That's good. Uh, so that that's already saved us a lot of money on workers' comp because mm -hmm. uh, we don't have the back injuries. Uh, and over a 20-year career, picking up stretchers does a number on your back. Mm -hmm. So uh, it also does a number on the people if you drop them. Uh, yes, yes, it does. Yeah, sure does. Okay. Thank you so much, Chief. Any, any comment on this? Thank you, Chief, for this upgrade, particularly in health care reform, <coughs> still always health care uh, leader and manager and understand the significance of this equipment. All right, number okay. 10. Uh, Commissioner. Chief Please. Spencer, what are you all Pardon? going to do with the furlough structures? Uh, we are going to uh, never use them again. <laughs> uh, uh, we will take them out of service. Uh, and we will surplus them. Yes, surplus. Good. So, so Mr. Peacock can ride them around the courthouse. God. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, thank you for taking them uh, out of the service and, and seeing the need to upgrade. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I appreciate the safety concern. Are you? All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Carthen. All right, we'll move on to tab number 14, authorization to approve an agreement with the <coughs> Guardian Training Center for EMS clinical rotations and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Chief. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, as the, the board is well aware, uh, there's a paramedic shortage uh, nationwide. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> And we've always allowed our vocational technical schools to do their third ride clinical rotations with us. 
uh, that this is a for-profit school that uh, has requested to do so. Uh, the, the advantage we see for us is that there will be paramedic students <coughs> riding with Douglas County, uh, and if we find a paramedic student that we think has a lot of potential, we can snag them uh, mm -hmm. then instead of waiting until they're through paramedic school and some other agency already that they wrote, did their clinical rotations with, uh, snatches them up. So uh, I think this is a good thing for us. Okay. The floor has been yielded. Um, any questions from commissioners? Just comment. Okay. So this is kind of like an internship type thing where we help the schools, uh, the students attending <coughs> the schools, uh, see firsthand the, the, uh, what a paramedic or a EMT does. Yeah, th this program actually, uh, to become a paramedic in the state of Georgia, you have to have so many clinical hours uh, and part of that clinical rotation includes riding on an ambulance. So you see what, what actually the so business is all about. So this gives them a chance to get to know some of the local uh, uh, firemen and, and EMTs and everything. And we get, uh, we can befriend them. <laughs> yes, and it also gives us a chance to get to know them. Yes. So, yes. Uh, you know, because some folks are just not a good fit. Right. Uh, so we think this will definitely help with our paramedics. Uh, so, uh, and later on, I'll be bringing another contract with another uh, school uh, called Fortis, uh, with basically the same the same thing. So that'll give us another another thing you look at. And you're back. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Well, Chief, just just to that point, do we ever recruit from uh, military? And, and, and I know, like you know, young. Um, um, people go into right out of high school. They go into the military and they serve their little, you know, two three year period, whatever they serve. And again, I uh, I respect it. And they come out. And so let's say they have some type of fire um, training or skill right. or something. That, are we able to go after them, or is this sort of not really? I mean, hot. I, I don't know. Well, th there are some some issues uh, okay. with with the actual state of Georgia. They have to get their reciprocity with the state of Georgia so that they can can uh, function within our system. Okay. Uh, a lot of times the military has a lot more advanced training than right. our basic EMTs may have. Uh, yeah. But because they're not certified by the state, we can't use them on the ambulances <laughs> until they get that certification. Okay. So, or that licensure actually is what it is. Okay. I was just asking for that clarity, yes. but, but I appreciate it. Because again, we all, you know, we, 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 we are concerned and we're committed to helping you uh, attract the right people here. So. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Um, Flipping you a back to Madam Chair. All right. Thank you so much. All right. We'll move on to the next tab, which is tab number 15, authorization to approve the mock alert system upgrade to be funded through the 2016 SWAST bonds as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Chief, again? Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is. Uh, for the new radio system, uh, when they dispatch a call out, mm -hmm. uh, it actually sends the, the signal out to the fire station. It uh, gives us an alert. It actually turns lights on. Uh, it tells us uh, on a large TV screen uh, where the call is at, shows us a map, tells us the, the nature of the call, uh, and includes when the last person clears the building, they hit a button and that automatically transfer, uh, trans, uh, automatically uh, uh, takes it back to 911 and shows that the last person is cleared, so that time's automatically displayed at 911 as well. Uh, the, what we're asking for here is uh, $19,350.07, and what that actually do, uh, will do for us is upgrade the IT infrastructure in the fire station to accommodate this mock alert system. Uh, this was part of the uh, radio system uh, when, when we uh, bid it out. Uh, the mock alert system was part of it, uh, but this takes care of the, the infrastructure on the county side to be able to utilize that technology. 
Okay, any questions from the floor? All right, sounds uh, pretty self-explanatory. Thank you so much, Chief. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, next we'll move to tab number 16, resolution to amend the 2019 budget for 2018 rollover and conferences, grants, and projects. Director Holman. Yes. Good. Good morning. Yes. <laughs> you got two minutes. Okay. Um, this is just a housekeeping um, item, as we call it, um, that we I bring before you every year when we uh, complete closing the prior year. And uh, simply put, what this is is any open purchase orders that we have um, at the end of 2018 that were legitimate that just didn't get paid because either we did not quite receive the service or the item. Um, and we pay those in 2019. We roll those purchase orders over to the current year and amend the budget, so it's a zero impact to the budget. Um, as well as any grants that were approved late last year. Um, sometimes grants are awarded late in the year, but they're for the whole fiscal year, so we need to roll over the grant funds. That's revenue generated as well, so it's amended revenue. As well as any projects that maybe we did not complete um, courthouse renovation being one of them. We had money in the 2017-2018 budget for courthouse renovation and now that we're beginning uh, that construction, that fund, those funds are then rolled over to the 2019 budget. This is budget neutral. It's already been reflected in our um, assigned fund balance for 2018 um, and there's no other impact than just rolling it over from one year to the next. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? All right, we have, oh, thank you so much, uh, Director Hall. Very good. Now we'll move on to tab number 17, and T.J. Jabalinski will yeah, be presented for Tiffany Stewart Stanley. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Number 17, Board of Commissioners is authoriz uh, authorization to approve the graphic design and color palette for the Douglas County Community Branding logo, and this is not to uh, replace our county seal that is a logo. Uh, would like to commend uh, TJ for a, a fabulous job for uh, working with uh, Tiffany Stewart Stanley on a uh, logo and it saved this county a lot of money so I want to make that very clear to our citizens. He is amazing. I'm, he's multi-talented so I'm going to let you do your horse and pony show <laughs> and show the Board of Commissioners what we have uh, designed or you've designed and then we'll see if they will approve it and we'll go from there. Thank you. So in August last year uh, the community came together and agreed upon some guidelines for uh, branding and marketing um, and this is what they came up with outside the lines and there's a very strict uh, guideline system that we're supposed to follow when we create logos and that kind of thing and there are a lot of people a lot of entities within the county and the city who have already you know signed on the water and sewer authority development authority tourism um, so you can see the Douglasville, uh, the economic development, they, they kind of created logos that sort of fall into the same family. That's, that's what, what they're looking for is to, to, look, to find logos that sort of look like they all fit together. And you can see that our, this is our stylized county seal logo that we use a lot of times for unofficial type business. It didn't really fall into that same family. So. What we did was we created uh, a couple versions or a few versions that we can use interchangeably. Uh, it will not replace the county seal, but it will replace the stylized logo that we had. Um, we do have green and gold. We've also got the ability to change up the colors to uh, the, the blues, uh, which is kind of the, the color scheme that they chose for the official community look branding campaign. And you can see it fits in here a lot better than the old stylized logo. And then also the blue version fits in nicely as well. So we just wanted something that was going to look like it was from the same family, but still maintain our look. We've got the courthouse. Um, we've got uh, the, the fonts look a little more like the community branding. So this is what has been selected to uh, show to you guys. Any questions from the board? All right. Uh, T TJ, one thing you may want to do whenever uh, a style or a set of styles are agreed upon, 
is get with Stephanie in my office and make sure that they're service marked or trademarked uh, so, so that the use is combined to county official business. Okay. Wes, before <coughs> handled the prior, the first one you showed, the right. whatever, and probably need to check and make sure when that runs out because they do expire at some point in time. But I would suggest checking that when you all finalize, and Stephanie knows how to do that in my office. Right, and we'll also create a style sheet that will go to every department that will tell them what's proper use, uh, things that can be modified, things that can't. Uh, and we'll try to run that through our department anyway. If someone needs the logo, we'll be glad to send it out to them. If they need to modify it in some way that fits within the guidelines, we can do that as well. Well, I'm told that by legal, thank, thank that Jennifer's here, that we actually service marked the other one because it ran out. Ah. So we, my office will know how to do that. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer, for reminding me. Okay. Board of Commissioners, or Commissioners, what do you think? You like it or? Are we just voting on the top one? No, the, just the bottom. The bottom. You see, the bottom is ours. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's the one that we just, yeah, those are the ones that we had. Um, there's four of them, and they can be used interchangeably. And the reason why, let me say this the reason why we have two versions as far as shapes, um, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, <clears throat> all of those require pretty much a, a round logo. Mm -hmm. It keeps it um, like a thumbnail. Uh, it's easier to see. If we were to use the top one, it would shrink it down too far. You wouldn't even be able to read it. Mm -hmm. So the round one. So you can use them interchangeably. Oh, I'm looking at left or right. Yeah, you're, you're, he's asking you to approve all four of those, correct? Right. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't get that. Yeah, so we can use it interchange for it. Right. Yeah, I'm sorry, we didn't specify. I'm about to I, thought, yeah, I, I got to give it a minute. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. So we just said all four. Okay. So we have a little more variety. Uh, mm -hmm. we, and we're trying to step our game up so we won't be so stiff and then, you know, trying to fall in with them and um, live outside the lines. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you. It sounds like they're okay. We have four choices, and you can use them interchangeably, Board, uh, board of Commissioners. All right. Thank you, TJ. Great job. We appreciate your talent here in this organization. All right. Next, we have tab number 18, resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of a tax anticipation note and the principal amount of $18 million and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Um, Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it is this time of the year again where uh, finance has calculated the, uh, the monies that would be needed to um, go through the period uh, prior to all of the tax revenues coming in. Uh, so we're asking that the board uh, sign a resolution that would authorize the county to um, sell a tax anticipation note in the amount of $18,000. Uh, 18 million. I'm sorry? 18, 18 million. 18 million? What did I say? 18 million. Absolutely. We do want 18 million. Uh, we don't want <laughs> So, uh, uh, again, um, we've been uh, working with outside counsel. Uh, on this and again finance and purchasing have been working together so we would like to advert after the resolution is signed hopefully we would like to advertise that this the uh, later this week and uh, next week as we're required to do uh, and uh, close on it as quickly as we can after a two-week period uh, we would try to close on this okay and board commissioners should we know these tanks are very customary I've learned quickly when I, I went through my class last year to uh, obtain my certification for uh, county commissioner. And of course, uh, it's a common thing all over the United States, or should I say in the state of Georgia, simply because of the timing the property taxes come in. Uh, $18 million is really a drop in the bucket. Some of these counties are looking at $250 million, $300 million, so $18 million, so it's not bad. But it is customary because of the timing of our process. It's, it's, I, I mean, <coughs> Commissioner Robinson is just says it's just a change of funds. What did you say, Jennifer? Is it this flow? A flow. Cash flow. flow. A cash flow. It's a cash flow. So anyway, any questions, Commissioner Guy? 
Yes. Um, how does this compare to last year and the year before? Um, last year we borrowed 15 million in May. Uh, in June, uh, 2017 we borrowed 12 million in June. So we're getting earlier and more uh, asking for more. Is there a trend here that we need to be concerned about? No, I don't. I mean, we're we're borrowing within you know within two to three about two months of when we normally borrow. And let me say this: eighteen million does include um, a cushion um, because one of my main uh, or one of our challenges it's not really a concern. The challenges is um, GDOT reimbursing us for some projects. Um, sometimes we will get those reimbursements within a month. Sometimes it may take three, four, five months to get those reimbursements. So um, that's out of our control. Um, so I have to count on the, not just general fund operations and expenditures, but I have to look at any expenditures that are in the, not the SPLOS, because SPLOS is covered, but the Capital Transportation Fund um, and the Greta Fund, um, where those are 100% reimbursable or there's some of the CTF may be 80-20 reimbursable, but we don't, we can't really count on uh, getting those reimbursements in a timely manner. Do we normally have a cushion for GDOT? Yes. In there? We do. So, uh, yes, but do we have more projects going on uh, than normal? Uh, probably about the same amount. You say more? Uh, yeah, we have. Yeah, he says more. Uh, and we will issue this in two weeks, so that will be uh, Can I? Yeah, the, no, the timeline will be that um, we come before you, uh, y'all approve to go out to bid tomorrow, the ads go in the paper, the bids are not due back until April the 12th. Uh, we took the um, advice and recommendation from our municipal advisor, Terminus, they had suggested Usually we have like a two-week turnaround. We came before y'all one week, the first meeting of the say the month, and then we awarded the bid second meeting. They suggested we start the process a little bit earlier and give more time, uh, three to four weeks uh, time for the banks to be able to. They have different committees they have to get to to get approval. They've got all their sign-off things that they have to do. So that allowed the banks to be able to. Or we hope that will allow more banks to put in bids, uh, which makes it competitive, which means that we get better rates. So um, that's another reason it's starting earlier is getting your approval, and we won't actually close um, on the TAN or receive the TAN proceeds until uh, April the 23rd. Okay. Um, the interest rate, um, you have they gone up they from have. last year? They have. So it's going to cost more. It's going to cost more. Um, you know, we anticipate the rates to be more than they were last well, we year. We paid last year's off earlier. We did yeah. we not? So if we paid it off earlier, it would save us money. It would save us some money. But um, the good thing too, yes, the cost of borrowing money is up, but also the to be able to invest it. Um, we take those proceeds and we put it in a Georgia Fund One account. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now it's about 2.6%, 2.7% interest rate. So um, we did talk with co-counsel um, Roger Murray this year we actually, uh, which is not a bad thing, but in the past the rates have been so low and the reinvestment rates have been even lower that we didn't have to worry about what we call positive arbitrage, uh, which means that interest or uh, the money that you make on your uh, borrowing um, has to meet certain criteria or you have to rebate some of the money that you earn on that bond pro uh, on the TAN proceeds back to the IRS. It's not a penalty. It's not anything. It's just saying you earn more than what you were allowed to earn for it being a tax exempt issuance. Um, so we actually may have that issue this year. We may borrow at, I don't know what the rates are, uh, say 3%, but we may be able to reinvest at 3.5%. And, mm -hmm. and that margin is what they call positive arbitrage, and we will just need to make sure and do calculations after we pay it off to see if we rebate any back to the um, IRS. 
Well, I saw that in the minutes of the Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. I've never heard that term before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds very serious, but all it breaks down to you earn more interest than you're allowed to because of certain criteria that maybe were met or wasn't met, and you just have to give that money right back to the IRS. That's all it is. <laughs> Okay. I wish they'd help us pay our bills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I get back. Okay. We'll move on to the next. Vice Chairman, yeah. Speak to this. Um, so eight, eighteen, eighteen million dollars. Um, you, you've got a history, right? Can you give me the history of over the past ten years for tens? Okay. Um, we'll start with two thousand and eight. Please. Fourteen million. 13 million, 16 million, 18 million, 16 million, 10.5 million, 6 million, 3 million, did not borrow TANS in 2016. Uh, but remember, that's when we got the Google. Yeah. <laughs> so that helped. 2017, we borrowed 12 million, 2018, 15 million, 2019, 18 million. So, what, what I, the reason I brought up, you, you, you got to, you have to have a, a a longer view of history to, to, to get a better context. If you compare one month to this month or um, this year to last year, it doesn't give you enough. You need more data points. So if you notice, um, we borrow based on the close, the fluctuates, right? Highs and lows. We've been at 18 below, 18 million before. We also have been down to zero. Mm -hmm. uh, whether we got uh, additional revenue from um, some type of economic development <coughs> or when we raised the millage rate that gave us that yes. big lift. Let's not confuse what positions we've taken along the way, right? And so, what, I mean, go back to our municipal advisor. I, I, that was a very wise decision because he did a document for us that, that spoke to how we, we operate our cash. Tremendous document. You guys all need to go look at this thing if you like that type of reading. But, what, what, again, what it told us is that we operate on pretty much, what, 5% of our overall, basically a nickel. It, but, but, but if you notice what happens, guys, is that I mean, this is a – this is – it's about the millage rate. When you roll back, you, and you don't anticipate your impending expenses that are coming online, or when mistakes are made, we have to accommodate errors and estimations for resurfacing or whatever the case may be, or maybe workers' comp or something that's unanticipated. That's material. When we went to Wall Street. One of the things that Moody's and Standard for, they made it very clear, like, yeah, you guys are very good, you do well, from where you were in times past, but now we're going to a whole nother level. They made this comment about long-term capital planning. You have no policy, you don't have a plan. We appreciate that what you guys, what we noticed and we just observed, you guys, not bad for a modern-sized county in compared to all the counties in Georgia and so forth. Now, I mean, it, it wasn't a criticism, but it's like, okay, if it wasn't for the Google, we'd have been in a different place, right? It's like, okay, guys, y'all y'all got to do a better job of long-term planning. Right, so we've got some things on the books right now that are coming that we have to anticipate. You, you can't keep taking it back, taking it back when your expenses are naturally growing. It's like you can't get there, that's math. Right, we all pretty much made it through high school. It's math, right? I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, 18 million, I'm like, okay, Jennifer. I'm, I'm looking at this like you've got three verticals coming online. Right, and, and, and that has, a, now I get cash flow, there's a difference, but I'm saying you gotta plan for this. You know, how do we offset this? And so I'm, I'm looking at this conversation, again, not to belabor the two, but it's important to message it. That, okay, guys, you've got some tans. Yes, we got to borrow them, $18 million. It'll up, it'll, we'll keep fluctuating, but uh, it's nothing to say that we, went, we have to borrow even more. I mean, it, is it really tight? It felt like me. It's about, it, it don't have more, we can't get any tighter. It, it's got to have a little bit more margin to do what needs to be done based on all the projects we said we wanted to do on behalf of the public. We want resurfacing. It's grown. That's more expense. We want these verticals they put in a referendum. More expense. Salaries. Right? And I'm like, okay, Jim, I mean, can you bucket jump on here to pull out to make this thing work? Um, cash flow from different things. It's like, guys, we got to do better planning. And it's just not that we're not. we just got to go ahead and make um, some, some tough choices on how we, we, we manage our future. I mean, we really do. I mean, it's, it's, I don't want to play the fear or the sky is falling or we not. No, that's not it. We, are, we can look at it. We already know what the truth is. Right? You can't hide it. You can't, you know, sort of send a message, well, this is that. Like, no, guys. 
We've already known this. I know Commissioner Mitchell, I don't know if he's in the door, but he knows where I'm going with this eventually, to have this very, very hard conversation amongst the five of us of how do we plan for our future for things that we know is coming. Um, that, that's a separate conversation. I have no problem with the TANs. I support what Commissioner Wiser did on um, giving recommendations to, to Jennifer. And so I'm fine with that. But that begins a bigger picture on how we manage um, our county finances. I do. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move on to the, thank you, Director. Mm -hmm. We're going to move on to the next item, which is one I know Commissioner Bagley did so we took 30 years with the authorization to award a contract to the culvert uh, group for the Whitestone culvert replacement project for a total cost of one million one hundred eighty-five thousand nine hundred ninety-eight dollars and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. We all we sent a bit, the bid out for this in, in January the 15th. The due date was February the 22nd. We received four bids. Uh, the Corbett Group was the lowest at one million one hundred eighty-five ninety-nine eight point five zero. After reviewing uh, review of the bids by both uh, uh, DOT and purchasing, we're rec respectfully recommending that the board uh, allow us to award that contract to the Corbett Group, who we think can do the work to get that culvert in place. Any questions from the board or comments, Commissioner Carter? Nobody is happier to see this <laughs> on the agenda for me, uh, except for the people that live out there in that subdivision. Um, you keep calling this a culvert. Um, it's more of a bridge. Um, I don't know where the word culvert. Um, we were, I was talking with Commissioner uh, Carthen this morning, and she called it a culvert. And I said, well, there's a big old it was a bridge that was washed out, really. It's, it's not just a concrete. I'll let Mr. Valentin <laughs> yes, uh, that. Commissioner, you're, you're correct. Uh, there is a term somewhere in between those two. It's called the bridge culvert. Because it is. <laughs> but it, when we started this, it was going to be a prefab bridge. Well, at, at one point. It was before my time, but, but my understanding is that it, uh, the initial thought was to replace it with box culverts, a series of mm -hmm. three of them. And uh, I'm not sure uh, technically the dimensions, the, the, the span, is what triggers the term bridge mm -hmm. versus a culvert. Uh, so originally it didn't qualify as a bridge, but a subsequent revision, then you're correct, it's more like a bridge, and, and in fact, uh, this will fall under GDOT's jurisdiction once it's in place uh, because it will have to get into the, the inspections rotation for bridges because of the size. Well, yeah, we approved this January of 2016, so it's taken us this long to get to this. But I am so happy, and I really think we ought to have a ribbon cutting whenever <coughs> it gets in place. Uh, the bridge was washed out in 2000. Mm -hmm. The subdivision has been cut in half all this time. Uh, fire department, you know, they're affected because which entrance do they go in mm -hmm. in case of a fire and stuff like that. Uh, police <coughs> the same way. But uh, I am so, so, so happy <laughs> to see this uh, come to fruition finally. And uh, I know that by delaying it for two years, the cost had to go up. I'm not even going to go there. I'm so happy that it's here. And and it's possible due to the fact that we don't have to pay the, for the Coast Road Bridge because GDOT came in and they're replacing that when we originally had that in our splotch. So some of those funds are going toward this to uh, to rebuild this bridge. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, now you're back. Right. Well, we're going to move on to the next uh, channel. I'm sorry, I didn't see you. I'm sorry. I'm glad that you're glad that it's coming on board for those <laughs> citizens. However, where was this money coming from? Okay. Yeah. So there's 450000 that we have set aside in the budget. Um, so we got fifty thousand from WSA, seventy-five thousand from the developer, seventy-five thousand from the county. This was a couple of years ago. One hundred fifty thousand from Georgia DOT. Approximately a hundred thousand remaining 
from the bond funds where we we received from the developer to top the subdivision. So we received 329,000. It's going to take about 229,000 to top out that subdivision. We will have to do that eventually. There'll be 100,000 left over. So we have 450,000 set aside. And then we have a recommendation from the uh, Transportation Committee um, to use post road bridge splice funds mm -hmm. uh, not to exceed 800000 And that covers the. Sidewalks, too. Getting the yes, but it's from the. Yes, he's on here. The developer will be installing sidewalks as he builds the house. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'm so sorry to see you. I had my glasses off. All right, now we'll move on to, I guess, um, well, Director um, Bellamy, you might just stay in position. Right. I'm moving on to tab number 20. Thank you, Director Peacock. Number 20 yes, is authorization to approve addendum number one to the contract with the Georgia Department of Transportation for acquisition right away in connection with the Lee Road Widening Phase 2 project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Okay. Um, let me give you some background on, on this. Uh, initially, there was an agreement with GDOT for right-of-way acquisition, one of the Greta agreements, mm -hmm. uh, for $6 million. And uh, then over time, uh, GDOT and others uh, lost track of where the funding went or was. And this is, in reality, what we've been chasing. Uh, actually, one of my primary charges when I came on board here was to find out wh what happened and uh, where the money went. And so what this is is actually uh, a commitment or a recognition and a commitment uh, by GDOT that the funds uh, are essentially uh, real money and therefore uh, initially, this is one step in that process, and initially what they're looking to do is to amend the original contract to go from $6 million to $12 million, um, hundred and some thousand. So an addition of $6.1 uh, to uh, to the funding on the project. Now what this is going to do is facilitate the reimbursement of uh, our right-of-way acquisition. Even though it was completed uh, well over a year ago in terms of acquisition, several of the parcels were condemned and the condemnation process trails, the, the final resolution of that process trails the project sometimes uh, a year or, or longer. And so we have, uh, over the last year, year and a half, been able to settle uh, many of those condemnations. However, there are uh, two or three that are still to be finalized. This funding will facilitate 100% uh, reimbursement to the county for those parcels. Uh, the remainder of the funds, now that uh, GDOT and the ARC and Greta uh, all agree that it's real money uh, would be to be able to utilize it in uh, in the construction phase of the project. Now, that this uh, this action now is an agreement to put it into the right of way component. I've had discussions with uh, both G dot well, Greta and the ARC about the next step in the process, but we're not quite there yet. But at least uh, with this agreement, uh, they recognize that they owed that money, that it was an allocation to the county, and uh, the, they intend to, uh, to make good. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay. okay. Yeah, this, I mean, no, no, it's okay, but this, this is an important project. This is an important step, and Miguel is right, so I do want to acknowledge this effort um, you know, our capital transportation fund uh, was was really a mess um, uh, when he came on board. A lot of stuff had fallen away. Um, some of the money that was allocated for that was redirected um, uh, for this estimate. I mean, this was the project in which Miguel came in to clean up or moving forward. But he, he had to clean. This was a mess, right, which is why some of the money 
which is why our general fund is where it is because we were having to fall on the sword and clean up um, uh, overestimations or redirection, all that. It doesn't matter. It's beating them, but it needs to be acknowledged. So we got a clean slate moving forward. And he had to basically, I won't call it a refinance, but he had to reset uh, that, that, that lead role. Um, and the public has been, you know, they were gracious during the, uh, I guess I want to call the recession, where we really had no money to work with. But now we're on the other side of that. We've got this floss. They're looking for results. I mean, that's a very, very busy cut through, right? And this is something, and, and again, I, I heard now the guy said, there's a war zone in there. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a mess and it shouldn't be. I mean, we, I mean, think about it. Thornton Road has been resurfaced. Fairburn Road has been resurfaced. Riverside has been resurfaced. But Lee Road, and, and so we're, we're taking a hit there, and, and, and it needs to be fixed. Uh, that being said, um, again, but it costs a lot of money. I mean, that's real cash. I mean, that's, I mean, think about it. This Lee Road project is big, uh, almost as big as the towers, right? It's more than what both um, verticals combined, right? I mean, all said, the full money was 21 million for Lee Road when, in comparison to um, our towers. So this is a very, very expensive, very, very important. But, you know, I appreciate Miguel, Matt Chair, I just wanted to acknowledge his effort on this one. You got it right. You got us right. It took you a minute, but, but it, it took what it took. It took what it took to sort of where the files at, where is the paper flow, working with finance, okay, where did the money go, how do we reconcile this? So for that, I want to say kudos for that to getting it back on track. Um, I've got a Lee Road Town Hall next month which we're going to give a full accounting of everything and where we are and how we can get this on track. But this is important. I didn't want it to fall, Madam Chair, no more than Madam Dyer and hers and um, her, her culvert or bridge culvert. This is as important because it's something that had been happened a long time ago that should have been done by now. Uh, and irrespective of how we got here, I'm glad to hear we're moving forward. Are you? Okay. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks for y'all. All right. <coughs> we'll move on to the next one. But again, I just wanted to chime in too. And Thank you so much because I had tears in my eyes and we had to uh, dabble into that general fund to pay for a mistake that was made in, in advance, which was one point three million, I believe. So every time, you know, it's not my commissioners should have questions about it, I had to take it out of the general fund and pay for it this year. So that's why I, that, that uh, general fund is leaning on the wall. We just right at the tip. We could have had some, some room for play. We don't have any play room because of that huge mistake. But that's okay. It's before Miguel. We got it cleaned up and we're moving forward. All right, next we'll move to tab number 21, authorization to approve an agreement to purchase real estate to acquire the required right of way and easements on parcel 0158 located at 2930 Bright Star Road in connection with the John West and Bright Star <coughs> Roads intersection improvement project to be funded through the 2016 splash bonds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents directly. Uh, that Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this uh, and several to follow are uh, parcels that we need to acquire in connection with that project. We are uh, about halfway uh, through that process, and uh, these are the ones that uh, we've been able to reach a, uh, an agreement with the property owner. Uh, so we, these are options to, to move forward with the, with the purchase. Okay. Any questions? Pretty much self explanatory. Tab number 22, authorization to approve an agreement to purchase real estate to acquire the required easements on parcel 0158025 located at 2950 Bright Star in connection with the John West and Bright Star Road intersection improvement project to be funded through the 2016 SPLOS bonds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents directly balancing. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, this, this is another one of those parcels that we've been able to reach uh, an agreement ready to move forward. Okay. Okay. Board of Commission, I'm assuming you're okay. I'm going to move on to tab number 23. Authorization to approve an agreement to purchase real estate to acquire the required easements on parcel 0158025000-16 located on the John West Road in connection with the John West and Bright Star Roads intersection improvement project to be funded through the 2016 SPLOS bonds and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents to the Valentin. Thank you, Madam Chair. This, this is uh, yet another parcel on the same project that we're ready to move forward. Okay. Pretty good. Board of Commissioners, we're going to move to tab number 24, <coughs> approval of agreement uh, to purchase real estate to acquire the right of way and easements of parcel 0158025000. Nine located at 2990 Bright Star Road in connection with the John West and Bright Star Road's intersection improvement 
project will be funded through the 2016 SPLOS funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin. Thank you, Madam Chair. This, this is the last of the batch today. Uh, uh, the last parcel that we would uh, we would need to uh, have a decision on to move it forward. We've reached agreement with them. There are other parcels in the pipeline that we'll be discussing uh, in meetings to come. Okay. All right. Okay, board. Okay, I'm gonna move forward to tab number 25 uh, for the record the ballot authorization to submit a grant application to GDOT for funding a, for road striping under the LMIG SAP program and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is an item that is uh, pending on the uh, Transportation Committee agenda for, for tomorrow. We will have a uh, more detailed discussion. Uh, but essentially what, what's happened is the, the Georgia DOT has identified some residual funds in the LMIG program uh, that they're looking to have uh, counties uh, apply for, but the deadline is very tight, it's April 1st. And uh, they, uh, they let us know about a week and a half ago, so we were not able to put this before the committee last month, but uh, it is an opportunity, uh, it is uh, similar to the typical LMIG, it's a 30% local match, and the uh, the target uh, author uh, the target grant from GDOT's perspective is 150,000. However, uh, because not everybody's able to move through the process quickly enough, there could be additional funds. So we've uh, actually given um, a list, and we'd like to make an application for a little over 300,000. In anticipation of additional funds being available, we want to be in position to maximize uh, the grant that could be coming to the county. So, uh, again, there'll be more detailed uh, discussion at the Transportation Committee tomorrow, uh, but if you would uh, uh, allow this to remain on the agenda pending uh, the discussion tomorrow, uh, we would be in position to potentially get about a quarter million dollars in uh, grant money. Okay. Any questions from the board? Comments? Okay. But well, thank you so much, Director Valentine. We appreciate you. We're going to move on to tab number 26. Mm -hmm. Tab number 26 is authorized uh, authorization for the chairman and county attorney to sign the 2019 Federal Transit Administration uh, certifications and assurance. Uh, Director Watson, and also if you could, yes, you introduce your new compliance. Uh, officer. I would be glad to. Before we talk about this agenda item. I would like to introduce <coughs> Janet Willis, our new compliance officer. She's been with us since February the 11th and is doing a great job. <coughs> and I'd like for her to come forward and tell us a little about herself. Thank you, dear. Madam Chair, Commissioners. Mm -hmm. uh, first, I just want to say I'm, I'm thrilled to be a part of the Connect Douglas and the Douglas County uh, family. I come uh, by way of MARTA, briefly from MARTA. I was recruited from Florida to work for MARTA, and uh, shortly after I started there, I decided I'd rather be in Douglas County, so here I am. Uh, I came by way of uh, Okaloosa County, where I worked for the transit system for probably close to five years, and I know you all don't know Okaloosa County, so that's, I'll say, Destin, Fort Walton Beach. Everybody seems to know that here. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm thrilled to be here, and uh, I really enjoy working with Gary. Okay, thank you. Welcome. 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 What I'm asking for today is that um, the, the certifications and assurances is a standard annual long-standing routine uh, item required by the Federal Transit Administration. Basically, they require our CEO, which is our chairman of the Board of Commissioners, and our county attorney to sign off on these certifications and assurances. And basically, it's what it's saying is that, that we will adhere to all FTA requirements, regulations, policies, yada, 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 all, all, of, all of that stuff. Uh, typically these come out earlier than they did this year but like a number of other things they got caught up in the government shut down so we do have a bit of time of, is of the essence with these because 
<clears throat> we need to get these in as one piece of the puzzle on getting our CMAC application approved. And FTA is reviewing that application right now, and we expect to hear something on that very shortly now. <coughs> Any questions on the board? Vice Chairman Robinson and then County Planning. We'll get you going. Okay, yeah, th thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I appreciate this again, certifications. Again, we, 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 we take oaths, uh, maybe as elected officials every four years, at least at the county <coughs> level. Um, and, and I, I recognize what the, the the federal government is asking us to do on an annual basis to reaffirm our commitment to their rules, right? Um, and, and that, you know, whether it's equal opportunity and how we do procurement, um, it, it, it's very clear um, on, and it, this is important, that we not just, it's the spirit, but also the letter that we adhere, right? And so I appreciate the timeliness of this process that like, yeah, we need to put that in place. That sometimes we have to remind ourselves and reaffirm that no, it, this is important. So for me as an elected official, when I took an oath to the federal government, the United States Constitution, and Georgia's Constitution, it's like, okay, I don't know about everybody else, but I know what I'm committed to, to uphold. And so um, this process is that, and if we violated this, what would happen if we didn't get this in timely or I mean, what, what does it mean? I mean, why do they make us do this? Why is this certification necessary? If, if, we, if we don't do this, the policy gets cut off for the, our federal grant money. And we may lose some faucet okay. that we've already gotten. Okay. So it, it has implications. Yes. Okay. I mean, do we? So our, is our compliance officer important to this process to ensure? I mean, how does it work? I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean the timing is. I didn't ask for this. But well, she she's going to make sure that that we're complying with what we're certifying. Okay. All right. So that's the in between. So we make the commitment. Then we have a check and balance along the way from the administration side. So I'm glad. We as a board approved that position and stuff. So we don't want to lose funding. Um, I, I, I get it. Um, and so, it, it, I mean, it, ta it takes it serious. I mean, I, sometimes people say the federal government has too many regulations. But, yeah, without regulation, though, um, left to ourselves, you know, things just wouldn't be fair, right? So that there is a need um, sometimes to have oversight and to have governance. So I'm good. I, I just want to highlight this because this was a good time to time. Madam Chair, I yield. Okay. All right. Um, Gary, thank you, Madam Chair. Gary, on stuff like this, one, the certification is routine. I don't have a problem with it, uh, Madam Chair or myself signing. But typically, since we don't work in this department, I would want something from y'all certifying that you believe that we are in compliance with what me and Madam Chair are about to sign because we don't have a way of knowing but for what you represent to this board. Can you say in your place that we are in compliance as we sit here today? Absolutely. Okay. Can and you send me an email just confirming that in writing? Sure. And, yeah. and as a follow-up to that, uh, County Attorney, um, Federal Transit Administration uh, reviews their grantees every three years. They, they come out and do an actual on-site inspection. It's, it's sort of a program audit. We had one in 2018, and we cleared it in every category. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well, so you certify things that you would you certify? You're certifying the kid that everything that's been done is being done or will be done. <coughs> will, what was that? Will, what was that be, will be done. Will be done. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Watson. And board of commissioners, you have your approval of the minutes for tomorrow, so please take a look at those. And are there any commission comments before I come to the executive session? I just want to make just one uh, comment just um, based on some information, should I say, um, notification I received on Thursday regarding the magnitude and Fairburn uh, intersection. There was a problem, and I believe there were some citizens' complaints, and that was my first time hearing of this <coughs> intersection being a problem, believe it or not. But um, I, we've taken a, a step further this morning. I met with the Sheriff Department and also Mark Till and our uh, Director of Transportation, Miguel Valentin, we met with the Sheriff and his Chief of, uh, Executive Team. And what we're going to do, uh, we're going to try to put some relief out there in the morning time during the peak period. We will have two Sheriff deputies directing traffic uh, from 7.30 in the morning to 8.45. That's just so, so basically that's when a lot of traffic is bottlenecking in that particular area. And we have uh, buses and things of that sort. 
and until um, Director Valentin has an opportunity to continue to press with the states, because Fairburn Road, or should I say 92, is a, and Mount Vernon, but, but, but Fairburn Road itself uh, is a state road. So we're working on that to see what we can do to move it forward. Forward, but as a temporary solution, the sheriff and his team has agreed to put some manpower out there. So I commend him for doing that for me this morning because I mean, I was I really want to make sure that our citizens are safe. And with that being said, um, Commissioner Guyton, could I ask uh, the county manager if you would explain what happened on Post Road Friday? Uh, uh, all I know is there was a man accident on Post Road. Because the road was closed. Yes, ma'am. I don't know. I never heard the details. From 10 o'clock a.m. till. And the fire chief just left. You know the details, Miguel? I do. I'll see what I can find out. Okay. You know, no, I don't know the details of it. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Biden. And I want to just clarify again with my conversation. It was Mount Vernon and Fairburn Road. Really. I said it, but I probably said it so quickly. I'm, I have a habit of speaking. And you mentioned time. we're applying for a traffic signal. Georgia DOT. Yes, we are. We are applying for a traffic signal, and we are uh, hopeful that, that we can expedite yeah, that. Yeah, actually, already have applied. So. <coughs> We've already applied, but we've got to apply some pressure at this point <laughs> and see what we can do to right. move that light along. And I just said, uh, and I'm, I'm going to say this uh, openly without board of commissioners, if we could perhaps, um, you know, if, if G dot feel that it's going to be a problem with funding, if we could look at some funding out of the SPLOS uh, and, and engage in an MOU. A memorandum of understanding and perhaps the GDOT may reimburse us or how that works. So I have our Director Valentin exploring that for me and he'll get back with us. And hopefully you'll have some information tomorrow for our transportation committee. Yes, okay. All right. Yes. What's this? You got heat, man. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but, but to this point, go back to one more time for the record. You got a million dollars that was set aside for safety and operational improvements from the NOAG um, um, 92. All right, so if in fact you've got um, that light intersection right there that needs a light, and then now you've got this one. You, in other words, you have a source, Miguel. You, so I, I don't want to, to Madam Chair's point, let's not make it seem like well, we got to go find the money. No, you've got the money right there that was appropriated. We've got a million dollars that hasn't, we haven't decided what projects goes in that million dollars other than the lights that Madam Chair wants at her intersections and so forth. But um, uh, Mark, <coughs> make a note of that, 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 that is a source of funding. That's uh, yes, operational improvements, Madam Chair. Okay. You've already got that. All right, well, we're ready to hopefully move out. Uh, okay. Um, Attorney Bernard, do we need to go into executive session? Yes, ma'am. Okay. For all three, litigation, uh, real estate, and personnel. Okay, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, please indicate by raising your right hands and aye. Aye. All opposed, the same in the motion carries. Uh, take 10 minutes and yeah. come back so we can take a step further. Yeah, good. Commissioners, yeah. right. we are uh, we're we're back into session. Any other questions or comments before we end this meeting? All right, with that being said, this meeting is adjourned.